Uh oh. This about to be a goodie. <laughs> yo, I have my brother on. Yo, it feel like we just did this last month or something, but I had to. I'm going to tell you something. First and foremost, welcome my man Young Jock back to Vlad TV, a.k.a. Mr. Viral, a.k.a. one of the greatest storytellers to ever do it, a.k.a. I don't know what this man is going to say this interview. Jock, how how was it on your end? Because I know my phone went crazy. Oh, no, man. It was was interesting, man, because people who... You know, like you've done business with somebody before and you and you feel like y'all never did really connect a hundred percent. Like you might have just been doing like little little deals, little stuff. And and now it's like they like ready to do business all the way, all the way now. It's like, what's what you mean? Like, man, I just I just I I don't know. I thought I thought I thought it thought I thought other things about you. You be like, what? what kind of shit is that? Sometimes you have to, you know, get the dirt off so people could get to the treasure, you know what I mean? But it's been it's been wild for me, man. Like everywhere I went, everywhere I've been going, you know, people are like, "Yo, you know, we like we we think you're good at telling stories, we're good at it." Uh, I mean, the police pulled me over. I was like, "Oh snap!" I was like, "Man, what the hell?" I'm thinking, I'm like, "Damn, I got warrants." So I'm looking in the mirror and shit. I'm like, "Hold up!" So I turn the car off, let the window down, turn the lights on so they can see, so they don't be scared. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, "How you doing, officer?" He like, "Yep, that is you, man. What's up, man?" He put his hand on his hip and shit. He leaned in, he said, man, I got to tell y'all, that goddamn Vlad interview, that Vlad TV thing, he can't really say, he said the Vlad thing, the Vlad <laughs> interview thing. Man, he's like, man, that shit was good, man. I respect you, man. I, I thought it was you, that's why I pulled you up. I wanted to tell you, man, salute you, King. I was like, yeah, man, yeah. I done folded my arms, this shit was weird. I was like, yeah, it was, yeah, Vlad, it was good. Wow, I'm like, damn. He let me, he pulled out, got that on. I'm like, this nigga just pulled me over, what the f- yeah, life's good. <laughs> okay, life's good. <laughs> we got a lot to get into. Uh, I'm gonna I'm tell you, I look forward to this interview because it's always good sitting down and talking to you. But um, I'm gonna tell you, even me, you showed me a whole other side. I was like, whoa, you know, my man Jock, his story and and your recollection is something different. Like you, like my memory sucks. Your memory is excellent. But some of the stuff that you went into, everybody didn't agree with. Um, as you know, one of your stories, one of the most popular clips was um, you talking about T-Pain and Lil Flip. All right. So <laughs> BG come down, T-Pain like, hey, shit, BG. Wah. You know, he, he did that yep, show yep. love, right? He leave. The nigga Flip come down like, Flip. Then they like, cha what's up? What it do, baby? I'm like, shit, what's up, my boy? We talking boo 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 Nigga T Pain, <laughs> Pain gonna hate me for this. Pain was like, ah, put it there. And that nigga Flip was <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, so I was like, oh. It's just like this Pain, like on some. Pain was excited, like, like he was a fan of Flip. Like he was like, nigga, I, I've been wanting to meet this nigga. Put it there. You know, like, you know, like on some white boy shit. Hey, put it there, chum. Like, Flip mm-hmm. wasn't flip one feeling none of that. Flip was like, nigga. And walked off. T Pain responded. Shade Room picked it up. And he just put cat. Cat, right. Now here's what just straight cat. I'll I tell you what's interesting. You wanna know what's really interesting? Go ahead. When I saw that, I was on the airport and I was like, nah, he talked because the 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 the, the, the the way it was written out is like Lil Flip, this is T Pain, and that's what made him write by you a drink. Kind that's how it was kind of written up. And I was like, maybe that's what Pain's saying is cap. So that's and I I even said it. I was like, nah, he's saying the title, how y'all headed this shit is cap. Mm. So how about I was just leaving Houston? Guess who's in the airport? <laughs> I see my guy Pain. I'm like, Get out of here. Pain. I swear to God. He like, he's like, and I'm looking at him like, I'm like, man, like, what's up? Like, you know, and it's the same type of camaraderie we've, all, we've always had. But he's like, bro, what are you talking about? It didn't happen. I'm like, what? yes, it did. And he's like, no, it didn't happen. I wasn't, I wasn't. And I'm sitting here like, 
Who's at the Anatola? You don't remember that? He's like, what is that? I said, the, the hotel in, in Dallas, where we was at. He's like, nah, I don't. I said, so you don't remember us going? After the show, we coming back, and niggas didn't know what they was going to do. And I was like, well, let's get something to drink till we figure it out. And then that's how I got niggas drunk. You don't remember that? He's like, no, nah, it never happened. And I'm just looking at him like, and his wife is sitting there, and Cash is sitting there, his security looking at me like, hey, I'm going with his story. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm looking at his wife, and she like, she ain't tripping. They rich. She don't give a shit. She like, I don't care, whatever. And I'm looking at pain like, <laughs> he's like, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> he was like, he's like, and I'm saying, maybe Jock is just doing something. You know, he's, 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 he's got imagination. I guess what Payne said. What? Payne gonna tell me. See, it's the details. It's, you so good with the details, you had me thinking, did this shit happen? And I'm saying to myself, nigga, this shit happened. What are you talking about? <laughs> I really got, like, let me tell you something. This is the truth. I got on the plane, I sat down, and I was confused. I was like in the twilight zone. I was like, he don't remember? And my bro, Chino, Chino was with me, Chino Dollar was with me, Chino like, what? I was like, I oh, don't know, man, that just was weird. He's like, well, hey man, you know, nigga might not remember this shit. I was like, I don't know. Okay, I mean, it, Lil Flip, he did an interview on Vlad TV with Coach PR. Shout out to Coach PR. And um, he said, yo, I am 99% sure. He didn't say 100%, so there is that 1%. Nah, you go back and listen to that shit. I heard that same shit he said. And he also said he went right behind it and kind of got down contradicted the 99%. You know, I got, I got a memory like an elephant. Mm-hmm. I remember 99% of the shit that happened on, you know what I mean, in my life. Right. It's a 99.9% .9 chance that that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Yeah. Um, I ain't got no problem with T-Pain. So you, did you ever remember meeting him at any point at that time or, you know, or you didn't, that didn't even happen? I met, man, I met T-Pain probably 20 times, um, sometimes in uh, Tallahassee for Dimp Week, you know what I mean? DJ Dimp used to have Dimp Week. We always like, it, it always been like in a move, you know, moving concert atmosphere. Right. Like, hey, what up, what up, right. bro, what up? You know what I mean? We never okay, got- Okay, so you said what up before and you met up mm -hmm. with him after? Yeah, okay. See, a lot of times, like, let me tell you, I'm gonna tell you something interesting. I done walked up on somebody like, what's up, boy? And they're like, nah, man, what's up with all that shit? Like, what you mean? Bro, the last time I saw you, I like you ain't know me. Where I saw you at? We was at the club, and you looked me dead in the face. I, th I got down through the deuce at you, you got down looked away. And I'm like, nigga, I don't even remember seeing you. Like sometimes, you know, you're in tunnel vision, shit happen, and people be offended by certain shit. They don't really. Yep. You know? Yeah, you, absolutely. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But you standing by that story. Man, I'm. So I'm just making shit up. Like, like, nigga, what am I, three years old? Like, you know what I'm saying? Flip might have not even recognized what was going on. Flip might have been got down up through there. I ain't going to say he was on drugs. I ain't going to say he was on lean. I ain't going to say he was on alcohol. I don't know. I ain't going to say he was on night. Could have been sober. But from what I saw, nigga looked down at his hand and was like, shit, let's go. He might not. Let's say he didn't see T-Pain hand. So he don't even know that, that even shit doesn't even happen to him. But I know what the fuck mm -hmm. I seen and witnessed and happened. Oh, you know what? Call T Pain's uh, call his uh, his cats who used to be be with him, DJ Little Boy, and uh, yeah, call him. Call, we might call get the guys you Jay Lyric. Yeah, we might get pain on the show. <laughs> okay, so those guys they didn't take it too much to heart. They were lighthearted about it. It was what it was. You know, everybody don't remember things the same way. I remember shit, man. Okay. I remember so, shit. So I'm you know about I'm, to go you, somewhere. Go ahead. You, you want to know why my memory is like that, bro? Why? Because I was the kid who was always wanting to do shit and see shit. And I was the kid who I paid attention to shit. I, I watch people. I'm a people watcher. Like, I'm open enough to say that I watch people. I will watch you. And then I can mimic you. I can act you out because I watch. I look at details. I can be like, yeah, nah, bro, you the type of nigga you'll put on the goddamn whoop whoop socks with that because you 
Like, yeah, how you, I mean, yeah, I do. How you know that? Nigga, I see you do it. I, like, I, I pay attention to the details. So it's interesting, like, when I, when I see shit, it sticks with me. Because I question so much, and I can't help that I'm like that. I'm, I'm like, really, like, I see shit, and I'm like, man, I wonder what made him do that. So that detail is going to stick with me. You know, like I said, Pain and Lil Flip, they, they was cool about it. It was what it I was. I love them both. It's all good. Yeah. Shout out to both of them. Pain. I love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, bro. <laughs> what, what about but Flip? you know what the fuck going on, man. Quit playing. Quit playing. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, everybody, they didn't handle your comments as well. Uh, shout to your boy, Nitty. Nitty... He, you know, he put up a post and yeah. he was very, very direct. And I want to read part of it because okay. I don't want to misconstrue his words. Right. Um, a young jock, why you keep telling lies? And I'm going to leave out the curse words. Okay. Why you keep telling lies that me and Gucci stole that record, go ahead from you. That we did 15 years ago. Every time a camera on you. That's some lame-ish to lie about, my boy. How you going to discredit that man's talent like that, bro? You ain't never in life had a conversation with me and none of that because it ain't never happened, nigga. I produced the biggest hit record of your career, and that ish changed your life. You, um, and, and here we go with something that's near and dear to your heart. You even effed over Chino, Chino Dollar. Um, when you got your deal and probably still owe that boy to today. You're effed up and unappreciative. I don't think he is clearly like, yo, this ain't a case of me not remembering. This did not happen. Hey, man, I'm, I'm going to say something. I'm going to be as, as real as I can be. You know, sometimes your positioning can make you look like a bad guy. And I'm speaking of it, his positioning. There's a lot of scenarios that have taken place that caused certain shifts. You know, it's, it's, you know I, could say, I could say something to you today, or I could say something in front of you, and it's not even directed towards you, but because this is my stance on something, I can shift the whole camaraderie between, between us because you don't agree, or you overly agree. You could be like, no, oh, okay, he on that, I ain't fucking with that. I ain't got to tell him I ain't fucking with it, but I, now I know he's staying. Now I know how to play the situation. So a lot of things have taken place in, 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 in throughout history and our history. And, you know, of course, he's going to feel like that because I told the whole story of, of what I saw happen. Now, mm -hmm. now, unapologetically, I'm just speaking the truth. Right. But I didn't want to ruffle nobody's feathers in the, in the process either. But it's the truth. How I felt is how I felt. What I witnessed is what I witnessed. What I went through is what I went through. Chino Dollar still with me to this day. Chino sitting right there. Chino, what's up? Yo. So, I, you know, you, certain things you have to sit back and just be like, okay, and I get it. Um, and he said a lot of other things. And I even said he pulled up on me and I borrowed some money from him at a gas station for some gas. Man, I'm, I don't know. I just, I get it. People take low blows, you know, you know. <laughs> I ain't gonna involve nobody else in nobody's shit, cause I could, I could, I could tell other stories that paint a picture of the type of guy, or not even the type of guy, the type of deals Nitty has done, or some of the um, conflicts. But you know, to to do that, you know, I got to go in and I may have to expose somebody else's hand. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, I'd rather not go any further, cause guess what? I ain't gonna make them more, 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 more upset. You know what I'm saying? Now. I could, somebody could say, well, what you on Vlad TV for? Tell the truth. I'll tell the truth. But I just don't, I wish not to put no more energy in that basket. You know, it is what it is. Because Nitty and I had reconciled years after that. We did. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that was a situation that took place. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell, I'm, 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 I'm going to put it out there. Rest in peace to my homie Wallow. You know, you know, Michael Montana? Absolutely. All right. Now, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna show you how shit be happening. Game changing shit. Michael Montana had signed to Nitty first, right? His first record he put out with K Count. Remember that? Yep. All right. So when they did that record, Michael was signed to Nitty. 
He didn't want to be in the deal no more because the deal was almost over. He felt like Nitty hadn't done anything for him. Wallow brought me Michael. Like, Michael, you know, like, Jock, you know Michael, bro, from the south side, woo 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 blah, blah, blah. We need help. He goes his contract. I'm sitting here like, what the fuck? We sitting in Red Lobster. He brings me a contract. And I'm saying to myself, now, damn, do I really want to, you know, what, what you want me to do? I, me and Nitty, we good now at this point. You know what I'm saying? And I don't, I'm like, I don't want to be at odds end with him. At odds ends with him. And that's why I was just kind of like, uh. But when I saw Michael say how he felt, he was just like, bro, I'm on, I got a hit record out. You know, brain ain't no, this, this shit finna take off. Da, da, da. I was like, well, what you want me to do? He like, man, I need, I need help, man. Get me out the deal, man. Can you help me make another way? And I was like, well, you know what? I got a homie that I rock with that I might can help you make some shape with. So you know who I went to? Hmm. I went to P from QC. This was way before the Migos, way before anything. P was when P was rocking. Um, I said, P, I think this would be a good move for you. Um, P was ready. I could, I, I, I could tell the type of dude P was at, that at just knowing him. He wasn't gonna play with it. And I'm like, well shit, he got a, he already got a hit record. P is focused. I could see what direction he's going in. He wants to win in this space, the music industry. And I he's got relationships, but he's got a certain demeanor that he knows how to nurture his relationships to keep him solid. So I I put a play together. After looking over the the, the contracts and everything, I called Nitty. So I was like, look, bro, you could try to do this, but you got a song that's that's starting to grow. It's about to blow up now. If 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 you create tr friction with Nitty now, you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna go wrong. It's, it's gonna go wrong. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and here I am. I've reconciled with Nitty. You know what I mean? Yep. So I'm like, all right, Michael, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna talk to Nitty, see what we can do. Maybe I can get y'all in a good space. Me and Wallow can help move, situate move you through the situation. Okay, cool. I go to Nitty, Nitty like, oh, okay, well, shit, I mean, what you can make happen? I said, I just got a bigger play, Nitty, you know what I'm saying? You'll still get your percentage, but we just need to renegotiate him and come to terms where I can let Michael do his thing. I'm going to hook him up with somebody who's going to make the play happen. So P got his attorney. He's, P is spending his money with an attorney. And no play play. We, that money is being spent. So that means the business is real. Okay? We get to a point, terms going back and forth where we about to do this deal. Michael Montana could possibly have had that, that takeoff like D'Amigos, you know what I'm saying? Because his record was big enough, he got the right cap about to be behind him. You know, get everything done. I sit down with Michael, me, and Wallow, and uh, I'll never forget this shit. Shit, we was at the he was at Red Lobster. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Michael was like, bro, I seen him watering up at the eyes. You know, street niggas, when they... You know, when they get emotional like that, you know it's like, ah, oh, you really want this. And he's like, yeah, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm good, man. Just, I just want, I'm, I appreciate you, bro. Just, this, this is all I've been praying for. I want to take care of my family and take care of my niggas, man. I want to make it. I said, all right, do you know, Nitty calls me one day and goes, hey, check this out, you going to believe this shit. I'm like, what? Shit, I got, I got Michael to resign. What? I'm holding the phone like, what? Hell yeah, you know, he went ahead and signed the paper. Shit, we good. And I'm fucking mind blown because I'm like, bro, what? I don't, I'm not understanding. Like, the whole reason for doing this was to get him in a position to be able to sign over here with P. And I'm trying, I'm, 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 something, something, what, what, what you mean, bro? Cause it's, it's not clicking. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not understanding what the fuck are you saying? Because this man spending his money. He ready to, he ready to get this man a whole, he ready to get you a bag in the, in the position, in this situation and Michael and take this man up through that. So I'm like, I'm not understanding. I'm frustrated because why are you calling me when I am the liaison in this deal? I'm the middleman helping put this deal together. Me and Wallow, and I'm not understanding how you calling me, telling me you got this guy to resign, which is going to void all the terms that we're paying to negotiate now. What are you doing? So imagine me telling Wallow this. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know, bro. I don't know. So me having to go back to P, like, yeah, man, uh, 
I don't know if it's true or not, but we might need to holler, holler at Michael because Nitty said that he got Michael to resign the paperwork. And that was a moment in history where I was like, ooh. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. It was like, damn, bro. Like, what you, you just, I don't know what to say, bro. Like, damn, what kind of shit that is? That's what this is what we doing, and then, and, and and so so I understand why certain cats get upset when certain things happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That because they they see things differently, and some people are just selfish. You heard them coming. I gave you the biggest record you ever made. No nigga, we gave each other the biggest record. You couldn't have done it without me. I could have done it without you at that moment, huh? Let's talk about this shit. What the fuck are you saying? Yeah, it's going down. It was a very big record. That was my first introduction to the world as a as a star but guess what you couldn't have done it without me i couldn't have done it without you brother you didn't walk and you didn't grab me by the hand walk me into a room and say here's a hit no shit happened and happened and things happened and 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 cause and effect brought us back together with me paying you with myself and chino dollar paying you for this yeah you know and and a lot of headaches came along with it as well you know but that's okay that's here nor there I could kill less, but I had to go on and put that story out there because that's another one of those monumental moments in our history in Atlanta of the do's and don'ts when it comes to the music industry. Because a lot of cats don't think they don't believe this shit until they in that position. And they're like, well, damn, this is the shit bro was talking about. Absolutely. And I'm not trying to throw nitty no further under the dust. I'm not. I'm under the dirt. I'm not. I'm just ex I'm just ex expressing how, you know, certain things come along with people. So. One would say, well, damn, you and Nitty, it was good after that. Yeah, we were. We talked and everything. But once he, there was certain things happened and made me look like an idiot. Walking, going back to P and his attorney and everybody, I got involved. And these people ready to put this fucking bag behind the situation. And I done sat down and I've taken the time to help recurate this whole new relationship that is already severed between Nitty and Michael. And then, you know, I see why you have these issues now. It's just certain business practices. Maybe it's just the way you move sometimes. Do I love you for being the producer of what's going down? I do. Do I love you for helping change my life? I do. But I hope you love me the same because it took both of us, my boy. You know? Well, with that said, I mean, God willing, you know, and I always say in business, it's no permanent friends. It's no permanent enemies. God willing, y'all can come back together, do it again. Who knows? Me and him made good music. Absolutely. I'm telling you, once we we reconciled and came back together and did a whole record with Jasmine Sullivan and Marsha Ambrosia. We did records and they were good records. It just was still so much chaos in the midst of other things that were happening, man. And sometimes, you know, God just it's just like relationships. You break up with somebody and we're going to get back together, and make it right. And you get back and you still get the same type of outcome. Sometimes that's just how it go. But hey, look, I don't got no issues. The shit that, that he and I had issues with, that shit long, gone, and over with. You know what I'm saying? I just hate that he got caught up in that last that last interview, and I just had to express how I felt because that's where I was at with it. It was that moment of me saying, you know what, man? Let me put, let me, if, 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 if y'all don't want to put the respect on my name, let me give you a few reasons why it's okay, too. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people don't see the reasoning that, you know, the, the, the most, the most... <laughs> The most interesting stories are always the back stories yep. because you be done set your mind on all these other falsified thoughts and, 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 and how it happened. And then one day when the truth hits you, you like, whoa, was that little <laughs> white kid on IG? Whoa, <laughs> it's like a whole new world. Yeah, that's how it be because you be you be caught out there like, damn, I never I never knew that. That's how it go. The rapper Conway, you familiar with him? Yes. I'm gonna take, you familiar with him, Conway? Enough, enough to, it's, n n yeah. Okay. He put up a, a video post, and essentially, he called out New York DJs. Um, very specifically, he mentioned Funkmaster Flex, legendary Funkmaster Flex. Okay. Um, Sus One. Uh-huh. Shout to Sus. And essentially, he was saying, like, these guys, they're old. But they're the gatekeepers, and they're not allowing rappers to get their music heard. So then, Flex, in typical Flex fashion, as you know, Flex is going to hit back. Yeah. 
he came back and he just listed the facts. Look, you have features with people like Eminem, Jay-Z, J. Cole, Travis Scott, etc. You had a verse on Kanye's album. You're managed by Rock Nation. You're distributed by Interscope, a major. Let me tell you something that nobody else is going to tell you. You're a 40-year-old bars rapper. If it ain't happened by now, it probably just ain't going to happen. So a lot of people don't know you're on the red. People know Young Jock, uh, obviously the rapper. People know Young Jock, loving Hip Hop Atlanta. But you're on the radio every day. So I got to ask you, do you feel like DJs still carry the same weight that they once did? Are they the gatekeepers? Are they preventing artists from getting their music heard? I mean, in the young jock fashion of me saying how I feel and being straight up, and a lot of in a lot of ways, man, DJs have a lot of power because DJs are put in position to where people flock to them because they're in a club, they're at a party, they they're at the festivals. They kind of are gatekeepers in a sense, but I can't say that they they can. I ain't finna say no DJ can completely block me. It's too, I can go viral. You can, I mean, at this point right now, listen, man, you got to be real. You talking about Conway right now because of that right now. The, a, the average person who don't know him or mm-hmm. can't see his face right now, they're clueless to who we talking about, right? But now just as fast because of how he feels, there's some sort of conflict or there's a... <sighs> situ- there's an anomaly for him. Something is keeping him from going up through there because when you name him features like that the, the, the label who's behind them the, you know the machine from the management it would leave you scratching your head like damn what is it sometimes it could be the timing sometimes mm-hmm. it could be them relationships so it, sometimes it could be the person who allowed you to put this work of art out yeah it's it might have all you might have all these features with these people but it might not you might not be properly aligned you know what i'm saying it's a lot of things and coming from flex and i get where he coming from if he keep testing your 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 product and nobody's biting then somewhere now he may feel especially if he don't have a direct connection with you he doesn't he doesn't gain anything from helping you or going out his way to help you then he he typically is gonna take his hands off like a nigga be like yo well you know hey it ain't working or it hasn't worked yet so i on to the next and the, the 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 part that makes a dj look even more nonchalant there are artists who are going up through the roof, who are popping, who are trending, who are the hottest thing going. And then there's the whole situation of labels bringing him music. We they putting the pressure on. We, we need you on this record. Then you got the homies that he that he know the personal relationships. It's like, bro, I need you to look out for me. Throw this in the set. Uh-huh. You know, it's a lot. So they kind of give off a nonchalant or ar- a nonchalant attitude or it's an arrogance like whatever. And naturally, as an artist, you feel like, damn, you on some you on some other shit. And that's where the disconnect and the divide takes place. And I think sometimes the artists do have to think like maybe I should go back. Let me let me let me just revisit the works I put out and let me just take the time to see why did not properly connect. I mean, you know, he says a 40 year old bars rapper. I mean, so what? So what? A lot of these rappers is over 40. Snoop and Jay-Z is, 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 is like 50. 50. Right. Yeah. They 50. Yeah, like, I mean, Plus. of course, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody's not as iconic as a Jay or a Snoop. You know what I'm trying to say? That, you know, they've just been very fortunate and been very blessed and they've worked hard and persevered through all the BS throughout their careers. But, I mean, Conway may have to just revisit what it is he's doing and maybe take a different approach because sometimes that may not be the approach for him. You know what I'm saying? Look at Joe Budden. Nigga can rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, hands down, that nigga could rap. He got he, he can he, rap. He barred up. But sometimes maybe his level of arrogance and his his hate for certain things or his misunderstanding for certain things is fucking up relationships and opportunities. And possibly that's why his music got put on on hold. But guess what? He stepped back, looked in the mirror, went through all his trials and tribulations, resurfaced. He said, you know what? I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a content creator and a curator for for the culture, and that shit is working for him perfectly because 
at a, in a scene, once you you 40, 40 plus, like, yo, kids, you old, you looking old to kids. I don't care what you say. My name Young Jock, and, and kids be like, yeah, my, my kids like that. You getting old? I'm like, yeah. What the what, what you think? I, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to feel old. I'm, I can put on the pop and shit and feel like I'm I'm young. But then somebody walk up to me and tell me, "What's up, Unc? Hey, man, hold up. <laughs> I am Unc now. You know what I'm saying? And then, and I think once we once we <laughs> in any sense, you got to embrace you, dog. That's just it. You got to embrace what's really going on and figure it out. No, and, and some people don't know how to redirect they feel like that's giving up winning is winning whether i wanted music whether i wanted tv whether i wanted radio whether i wanted doing vlad tv interviews goddamn winning is winning when i could put food on my table when i could live the lifestyle i want to live when i ain't got to have my hands out begging then i'm winning and that's what a win is so sometimes cats don't know how to give up because no one we're taught to not give up but maybe give that up <laughs> you know what i'm saying and let's redirect and re-challenge ourselves and go f uh, at a different approach and from a different angle because sometimes it's just not meant to be. It's some cats in our neighborhoods who would have outballed LeBron, who would have out outballed Kobe, rest in peace respectfully, who would outball MJ, but the stars won the line for him. Mm -hmm. that, that, it, certain things didn't happen. It's a cat right now probably would have bust all these niggas' ass, couldn't keep his grades up. Nigga caught a body. Nigga became a body. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> the interest change you know what I'm saying but for those who persevered and surfaced to become these iconic legendary staples that we know and love I mean it don't happen for everybody but okay um, I'm sorry for taking a long way around no, I, you, I, I just you, be expressive like that and truthfully <laughs> speaking that last part about what you said um People need to really go back and listen to that because sometimes people need to understand a win is a win is a win is a win. Yeah. You know, it's okay to redirect your attention. It's okay to, to recognize this ain't working for me. But if I go that direction and just make a small pivot, I can be successful regardless. Somebody need to rewind that clip. Respect is respect, man. I'm, I'm going to tell you that. It's like a win is a win. Respect is respect. You know, at the end of the day, you could be a bum. You could be a bomb ass, nothing ass dude, but if you got a bag, <laughs> <laughs> niggas gonna respect that bag. That's a win. Hey, if they may not respect me, I'll respect this bag, don't they? Yeah. But it's, you have to know that. They don't love me. They love the fact that I'm winning. And some people are gonna hate the fact that I'm winning, but that's okay. It balances out. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta be aware with your wherewithal mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to know how to properly move forward. Okay, speaking about Making a pivot. Uh -oh. Me Meek Mill recently left Rock Nation management after 10 years. Um, right. You know, he said it was just time. What's your thoughts on that, especially considering Rock Nation, you know, when you think Meek at this point, him and Jay, they, they've done some really, really great things, um, political right. things. They've pivoted and they've stepped out of just rap music, you know, Meek stands for something more at this point. Prison mm -hmm. reform, um, really changing the system. What's your thoughts on him leaving Rock? Um, honestly, prayers. Let me tell you something. It's very interesting because people could be like, "Wait a minute, this is the what are you doing? This is the biggest platform ever when it comes to management." I mean, their hands are in everything, and blah 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 blah. blah and that shit starts sounding like that, right? But then when you think back, you say, look at the, the length of time that they've spent together um, uh, as business partners. You know what I'm saying? Ten years. That's a decade, right? In a decade, how many of those relationships has me garnered through, the, through that partnership or whatever partnerships to the point he is, he's a brand himself. You know, just as you can say Rock Nation, you, you can say Meek Mill. Right. Yep. He's done a great job at branding himself. You know what I'm saying? Respectfully. Um, after so long, some some cats start to feel like, yo, you're not we're not really meeting new people. We just playing in an arena of the same people. And after so long, if I'm if if this is not working anymore, we gotta figure out a new posture 
we got to figure out how this, how, how we going to, you know, what we going to do different, how we going to win. Because maybe we're not, it's not that we're losing, but we're not winning at the same level we were once upon a time. And that's what, that's how it goes in the world of business. You step back, you assess what's going on. You see where the changes need to be made. Sometimes those changes can be devastating to all parties involved. And sometimes those changes can be the triumphant victories that we love to be like, whoa, that boy did a, why that boy pulled a move with that one. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But after 10 years, he probably feel like, yo, you know what? I want to do a LeBron. I don't need no big agent. Let me get one of my mans who've been riding with me for 10 years, who've been loyal who know enough he, he's been around, I'm going to give him, we're going to all give him the game because at the end of the day, my attorneys is going to negotiate whatever deal come through. So you being my management and making sure this shit together, you've been rocking with me, I'm going to give you the bag. I'm going to give you the opportunity to make that play. People hated, Le people probably thought LeBron was out of his mind for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Give they me, did. They did. They did. But look at his story now. Look at his story now. He, he, he made his homie the biggest agent in his world. And now when you got somebody like a Meek Mill who's had a chance to stand next to these powerhouses and the people backing and behind these powerhouses and he begins to sit there and feel like, well, shit, people know my name. I'm standing for shit because I've I've positioned myself right next to these powerhouses to the become to the point I become a powerhouse. Because when you speak of prison reform in today's society right now, right today, you can put you can attach Meek Mill's name to it. You can. 100%. You, you can. 100%. And, and, and that's what it's about. He's positioned himself to do that. So it's kind of like, yo, what are we doing? I, my mans could be getting this money. If I'm getting 150 a concert, why am I getting in the Rock Nation? They, I mean, it's right now, like, yo, it's over with. I can leave. I can do what I want to do or whatever. I, I don't know how his contract was set up, but he could make his mans that now. Or he could make one of his mans the road manager who probably already is right there. And he can make his other man the main man, the manager. And instead of giving them 20, he could give one 10, another one 10. And now his, his crew is eating like they supposed to be. He don't got to give them nothing. They can be properly or rightfully paid for the position they play in his everyday life. So I don't know. But I, uh, I wish him well. I wish him much success. I know I, I feel like he's done a great job for his for his stint with them. Now, you know, you just have to be prayerful and, and, and mindful of the next stages in his career. That's it. Yeah, I wish him both um, a lot of success and I'm sure they both will continue to prosper. Uh, Boosie and Young and Young Blue. They got Man. a little drama going on. Um, just to recap the audience, Boosie signed Young Blue. Um, but later on, when Young Blue got a feature from Drake, Blue was like, yo, technically, I'm not signed to Boosie. So now Boosie's taking Young Blue to court. Um, Boosie claimed that they forged his signatures on some documents. Blue said, yo, I blew up kind of without Boosie. Like, like he didn't do much to help me blow. He also said he got something like $9 million worth of deals on the table. And part of the reason him and um, Boosie got problems is from a Vlad interview that Vlad did with Young Blue. So <laughs> I want your thoughts on this because it seems like when artists in particular when they coming up and, you know, when they got to pay that 10 percent, 20 percent over the management or to um, the production companies or whoever it might be, they cool with it in the beginning. They're good right. when it's thousands right. of dollars. But now when we talk in millions of dollars, we talking nine million dollars worth of deals on the table and I got to give you 20 percent. It all of a sudden becomes a problem. So my question for you is, you've had artists signed directly to you, and you are obviously an artist. Has this ever mm -hmm. happened to you personally, where artists, you know, once the bag come, what do you mean I'm not signed to you? And for you, did you start looking at situations crazy like, yo, you ain't really do that much for me, so I, I don't I'm, see why I'm, I should I'm, pay this I'm, money. I'm gonna speak on me first. Like I didn't, I didn't ever feel like that because rightfully so, I chose 
to deal with everyone that I was dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. I chose, no one put a gun in me. Those were my decisions, my choices. And when I made those decisions, when we did what we did, when it came to paperwork and shit like that, we rocking out. And that's why I rocked out, okay? Now, when it got to a point where that shit started creating conflict in my personal life, my business world, and, 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 and it came to a point where it was like, nah, this is crazy. I'm not, I'm not, because it, it never was about what I'm paying somebody. I, I feel like you rightfully supposed to get what you get. But if you put me in a position and I feel like we're going to do something to each other or something bad going to come of this shit, like my, my particular situation, I was like, all right, well, let me show you this loophole then. No, nah, and that's fair. Like, and that's what that was. We don't even need to go down in, in that this road. situation. Now, I know. I know. So, so you're in, good in with this, paying what you, you my, my question is. I never had a problem with paying. So even in this situation, right? Mm -hmm. I think like as men, first and foremost, before anything else. You know, they got to come to the, they got to come to a, a, an agreement. They got to come to, it's it got to come to a head. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember seeing the post when Young Blue was like, yo, I'm just giving you a hundred thousand. Boots were like, damn, that shit, what's up? You know, I, I was like, damn, I didn't understand. But I, I was like, that's some dope shit right there. You know, and I think, I think at that moment that was like, look, this is the least I could do. I can't really speak on it because I don't know because I know how it looked and the way it appeared. He was just like, no, I'm just doing this. But a lot of people questioned. It was question marks all over that shit because I was like, why you just come out and give him that kind of money? Because he just he your boy. Because remember he, he said because it was very blurry. There were blurred lines when they asked if he was signed. You remember that? And he was like. Absolutely. Blue was like, and, 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 and Boots was like, I ain't really. One of them said they, he wasn't signed kind of in that and I think that maybe bro was able to take that because it kind of sounded like he just said nah man Boots is just my nigga man if it weren't for him I wouldn't be on because it's not like Blue kind of even in that when he was doing that he was saying that he wasn't signed to Boosie that's just his man and no matter what he felt like he owed Boosie his his his, his, his remember he said that yeah. like yeah. no matter what I feel like I owe him because he gave me an opportunity but he said he wasn't signed and if you go back and look at that, maybe that was the, the setting or the footwork to be able to be like, shit, you heard me saying sign, boosted didn't disagree. Hell yeah, I can do these deals over here. Let's go. I mean, it's crazy. But, you know, that's up to, they, they got to figure that out. They got to figure that out because it's already out here. In the, it's, it's, it's out here now. The world know about it. Even if we don't know all the details, we know enough about it to where we're going to keep our eyes on it. I mean, the, the, the moment <laughs> the moment when we get some details, it'll be shared throughout the metaverse and the, <laughs> and the Internet. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I, I just think, though, that, like, you know, it's kind of crazy if. If that paperwork strong, like like it's supposed to be, and that's what it was like and you and you can come to the world and, and say, I, I, I respect you enough to give you X amount of dollars in front of the world. You know, you displayed that shit now. And maybe that might have been his saying, his homage, like, hey, I appreciate that. It's about what I feel like you did or been worth to me. But I got some other shit in the works. I'm just not saying it right now. But to the world, it's going to look like a good gesture later on. You just never know. Uh -huh. You got to, you know, sometimes when people go over and, over and beyond for you, you got to watch. Why? It's like, you know, it's, 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 it's like, whoa, why you do that? Where that come from? Why you give me that? That will make me go searching. I would go searching because I'd be like, damn, where you get that money from? I mean, I know he was doing shows, but I'm going to ask him, what, you saving this up? What made you get this? What, what happened? Because <laughs> if you ain't been doing it, like what? Because did you have to save up to give me this? Because at that time, I'm sure he wasn't getting 100000 a show. So even if even if Blue was getting 10 a show, he, he, he could say he held on to 10, show, 10 shows to give me this. I'm, I, I would be questioning all that shit. Why are you doing this? Now nah, tell me what's up for real. I would have, but... Well, be it as it may, man, you know, there, there is a lot of value in major artists attaching their name to young talent. You can become an overnight success with the right verse, with the right cosign, with the right person saying, yo, this little nigga hot. So I don't know what that dollar amount looks like in the end, but if the paperwork is right, you know, they definitely go into court 
this would be settled. But, you know, I think people, especially young artists, you always got to recognize you didn't get here on your own. And especially when somebody put it all on the line for you and, and out of the millions of artists out there chose you and said he hot or she hot, I don't know what that dollar figure looks like, but you owe him because before that you was a face in the crowd. I mean, I, I would always tell any, I would tell any artist, look, man, if you feel like you want to do this on your own, do it on your own from the get go. Don't attach yourself to a name just just to be attached to the name because they're going to eat off you. And, and they, the way they eat going to look way different than how you eat. You know what I'm trying to say? Because they already up. They already own. So when you see them splurge and do something crazy and lavish, you can't just say they're doing that with my money. Because. Mm -hmm. That might be some of your money, but they got their own bag they might have put with it too. And you know, and that's that make a cat feel like you already got it, bro. I'm out here trying to, I'm trying to feed my niggas, you know, all your niggas all on already. I'm the new nigga on and you know them, you, you hit them, you hit them little jokes and shit like, damn, bro, let me get down. <sighs> you know, artists, I think, like, cause 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 once it pop, once it pop, the problem is it it kind of goes on cruise control for them. Because once this, once once you get your system down and the deposits coming in, the money's coming in, the checks coming in, the royalties, you start feeling like shit, bro. You ain't doing nothing. Well, shit, it's it's on cruise control now. If you sign to me, I'm not getting out here performing your song. You got to go out here and perform your song. I'm not doing your interviews. You got to do your interviews. I'm not traveling across here to do promo tours. You got to do that. Yeah, I may join you and accompany you, but you got to do that. And the artists feel like, well, I'm doing all the work. Well, I helped you in the beginning and along the way. And now you just don't see me doing the physical work in a sense. I'm not, you're not having to follow me and it's me and me and you jumping on my stage. Now you got your own stage. Well, now you get your own stage. That does not mean I go to zero. We continue with the paperwork and how it says we supposed to distribute funds between us. That's in this goddamn binding contract disagreement. Period. That's right. Boosie had, he's out, he's extremely outspoken, as we all know. Yeah. Um, he has some very, very outspoken comments about R. Kelly getting sentenced for 30 years. He felt like, yo, R. Kelly was over sentenced. Um, and part of it was for being black with money. Um, a lot of the stuff that he did, it wasn't like he was jumping out from behind the bushes, grabbing these people. So, I want to get your take on it in terms of R. Kelly getting that much time. Do you think it was kind of a payback thing? Like, yo, you know what? You got away with the, that trial back in 03 or 05 and when, whenever it was. And now we not just getting you for these new allegations. We getting you for that. Kind of like with OJ, oh. you know. Let's, let's, let's be for real. All right. Let's say if it's 40 girls that have come forward or 40 people have come forward to talk about what R. Kelly has done to these girls, right? Out of 40 of them, if one of them was underage in whatever state they were in, okay? Whatever the statutory laws are when it comes to statutory rape or whatnot, See, we use the word rape. It's rape is, is an action where you took it and it's also a statutory rape where that person is not of age to give consent. It's consensual, but it's just not of age. They're not, not of, of age. age. It's consensual, but by law, they can't give consent. It takes one. All it takes is one. One can get you life. So saying that he was over sentenced for all the things that may be true, could be proved guilty on or innocent. It, it only takes one. Now, I, what I will say is there were a lot of parents involved, you know. Just as I saw one parent was having a, a text, it was in his, his articles of his, you know, his, his trial or whatnot. And maybe they didn't use it in trial, but I know that it was, I saw it. And it was basically saying she was telling him, give him a massage and all that shit. And if you don't, somebody else will, some shit like that. Like, this is the young girl's mother yeah. coaching her daughter, her so, underage daughter. So at what point do we not 
speak out on those parents because it's not all on him in, in a sense. And I'm not trying to open up the door to go back and get these parents because they was probably just trying to help secure a bag for their family. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I'm, I'm just saying this, this is what it is. So I don't want nobody to come trying to attack me because I done got them some charges. It ain't me. If you did it and, and, and the police see fit to come get you for that, that's y'all. But I think where R. Kelly, I think his biggest mistake in all of this is when that girl parents came for him. her father and her mother came for he should have sent them girls on about their goddamn way. The arrogance is what heightened everything. The level of I'm fuck wittable, I'm untouchable, I am a legend. That heightened everything. And it and it draws it drew so much attention that they had to get his ass the business. I think that was one of his biggest mistakes. And I'm not saying anything to say what he should have done to cover up his situation. I'm saying it wouldn't have been as bad. When they, what's Jocelyn Savage and the, the other girl, when the parents came looking for her, and the dad like my daughter brainwashed, and that, give them back. and that shit started making other people come out and, and give their recollections of, 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 of things that have happened in the past and girls start, th that, that was the biggest problem. It's like pulled all the scab off, like what you said for the old shit. It pulled a scab off them wounds. And now you got these open wounds, gaping wounds, because it's so many. I, I thought they was going to give them about 40, 30, 40. And I, I mean, it's what it is. Yeah, I don't think nobody was surprised with the length of time he got. Um, Nigga might have been surprised out of you don't want to see your mans because, you know, you know, if, if Boos is an R. Kelly fan and he supports R. Kelly, you know, for the for the legendary artist he has been, then, you know, you can understand him being kind of like, now they did my dog a certain kind of way. But it only takes one. So I, I don't know if I can agree with the whole the concept of over sentencing. It only takes one. And I really it's so many of them that they put in them charges. I, I I'm not even abreast enough to know which one really stuck it to his ass or which which particular case or person stuck the hardest where they was like, oh, we got him on this. You know, I don't know. I'm not an attorney. Again, you know, your man Boosie, like, like let's, let's stay in that Boosie lane for a second. Um, mm -hmm. Eric Holder was found guilty last week of killing Nipsey Hussle. No surprise there. It's on video. Right. Whole world saw it. Um, right. First and foremost, did you know Nipsey? I didn't know Nipsey. I didn't know Nipsey. Never met him. I seen him in passing. Like, like I'm way over here somewhere. I was, I was somewhere and he was like, like we acknowledged each other, you know, on, on two occasions. It was, it was an acknowledgement, but on both occasions, he was Nipsey. I was on Jock and I'm doing like interview somebody camera in my face I'm taking pictures and by the time we look up we running we getting on planes and shit like that he and I never had a chance to just really not that I could remember anyway but we had a chance to just kick it and know each other now nah. okay got you alright basically this guy's looking at life in prison mm -hmm. but Boosie was like yo I don't even want the guy to go to prison Prison. I, I think he should get a headshot what's, what's your thoughts on this guy being in prison for life? Or do you think he deserves street justice? You know, everybody's idea of torture is different. You know, Boosie, you know, want to give him eye for eye. He wants an execution, right? Well, some people could find the execution to be too instant. There's no torture involved. The only torture is leading up to that moment, the countdown of knowing I'm about to die. But once it happens, click, bang, click, pow, bang, boom, it's over with. There's no more torture. The, the punishment is over. I mean, you're dead. Even though you're dead, I mean, we all going to die. So some people feel the torture would be to let his ass go to prison because they're going to molly whop him all up through that. He's going to be somebody bed mate he they going they going he going to get G'd a lot they going he going to be a G freak wherever he go it's going to be niggas that want to make an example out of him depending on what type of uh you know camp or prison he goes to they going to make an example out of him man he's got a long ride ahead of him you talking life you know, you know so some people could feel like that is the better torture other than just taking him out executing him 
that's my, I mean, me personally, it's just fucked up. Cause at the end of the day, we lose, we lose, we lose two. You know what I'm saying? In a yep. situation. Now, so I'm gonna feel like he deserved to be gone because he committed the murder. But I'm gonna step back away from it and say we still lose two at the end of the day. And that's just, that's one of the most realish things that is taking place in our community every day. One is one is on an obituary and one gets a sentencing number. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of pre people looking at lengthy prison sentences, Young Thug and Gunner. <sighs> That YSL Rico case, something mm. different going on in your backyard, the A. Um, number one, did you know or do you know Doug and Gunner? And I want to get your thoughts on just uh, lyrics and, and social media posts being used against people when they, you know, when they're looking at fighting for their life. Do you think that's fair? And then lastly, they treating these guys like, you know, Pablo Escobar or something. They can't even get bond. What, what, what is your thoughts on this? I'm going to tell you something interesting, man. I got locked up one time. I got back from Germany, right? Police officer told me I was parked in the handicap, but I wasn't. I'm parked in the space. My tire is in the handicap because the car before me was over. The car that was shifted. So my tire is on the handicap line, but I'm not in the space. He tells me, sign the ticket. I sign it. He look at me and say, look here, that ain't your signature. I said, that's my signature. He said, well, I'm looking on the back of your license. It's not your signature. I said, that is. He said, well, I'm going to give you one more time to sign this properly. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I signed. He said, all right, you going to jail. I said, what you mean? He said, because it doesn't match. I said, it's the same signature I just signed. He said, but that's, neither one of those match was on your ID. I said, bro, that's from when I first, that my signature never really changed on my license from when I got my learner's permit. You know what I'm saying? That's just like my signature's changed. It's a long story short. Takes me in the police car. As I'm riding, he says, so I know who you are. You a rapper, ain't you? I said, yeah. I said, but I'm, but I'm, also, I'm also a Christian. <laughs> I'm a taxpaying citizen. You know, I'm a father, I'm a married man, right? They took me to the jail. He came back with lyrics, bro. He went and got one of the records I got with the game and Jim Jones of my second album, Cutthroat. And he came back and read those lyrics to me and told me that's why he decided to arrest me. Dumbest shit in the world. But when I sat back and thought about it, I was like, damn. He ain't gonna think much of me because of the things that are coming out of my mouth. I think in thugs and situation, man, mm. to tie it in, you know, when you have allegations out there, strong allegations, um, when it when it when it touches on, you know, murder, gang activity, you know, I think somewhere in there you have to you you owe yourself a certain level of accountability because when we out here in this world, it's like, you know, everybody looking at you, the kids looking at you, the police looking at you, the politicians of your city looking at you, your haters looking at you, the motherfucking fans looking at you. And when you say certain things in your music, people are always going to try to tie it in to an event. You understand what I'm saying? It's like right now when they say, Oh, it's a sneak disc. What's a sneak disc? Why would we call something a sneak with the word sneak disc? Why do we call it sneak disc? Because you snuck it in there on us. But we would not call it a sneak disc if it was so sneaky that we couldn't acknowledge it. Right? But if you could sneak it in there, but I acknowledge it and I put two and two together and I could tell who you're talking about, then it's a sneak disc. So that's what these prosecutors are using. The whole idea of not a sneak diss, but a sneak confession. That's what they looking for. Mm -hmm. Where you saying you do this or you would do this or you you've done this or you are capable of doing this to them. It's like a confession. It's a confession. You saying it to the world. Now, I me personally, I sit back and I'm like, damn, this is this is not good. I say, but they're going to try to make an example and they're going to take this 
I don't want to use the word cookie because when you use the word cookie, this is soft. This ain't no soft shit. This is some, this is some real shit right here. They're going to take this cookie cutter, this dye, and stamp it out in our culture when it comes to the music. It's enough cats who saying gang, gang, mob, you know, that you'll start hearing them say the word twin is gang related. What up, twin? You know, you'll hear that because they're trying to decipher what's in your lyrics. And when it comes to our, well, let's be for real, man, we be so right there in the streets with shit. People going to tie it to us. They're going to tie it to us. You know what I'm saying? The level, the, the heightened level of, of criminal activity. They're going to say, oh, man, it's in the lyrics. Listen to what y'all telling these kids. I mean, because if you ask at the average little cat right now running up on you, it's going to be one out of 100 that's going to come at you like Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole. Everybody else going to be gang, gang, ops, slide, sticks, blicky, switch, <laughs> kill your mama. And it's so sad, but that's what's going on. So these people are looking at like, you know what? Even if these charges don't stick, with Thug and Gunner. You know what they're gonna say? They got their ass off the street for seven months to so some of this shit could die down. And then it sets an example for these other artists who say, oh, this shit real. Let me fall back with some of this shit or let me get out the streets a little bit. Even if I ain't like gang affiliated or gang related, I'm so close to shit, the shit could stick. Let me back up. Cause it's definitely got niggas with a different posture right now. Niggas joke like, hold on, hold on, let me not say gang, gang, you know? Nah, that shit for real. Because when you start saying that shit, all some gotta do it pop up and, and you, you got it. Everything we do is recorded now. You can't do shit. You think you don't see nobody outside. It's a thousand ring cameras on the street. You, you did some shit, you get caught. You think you ain't doing that. Somebody sitting up filming their baby take his first steps and you in the background and you slap the shit out of somebody or bust somebody. They weren't trying to get you. They just happened to see it and kept the camera rolling. Big brother, the eye in the sky is everywhere right now. And I think that this will deter a lot of the criminal activity that's right there closely related to these hip hop artists. Because guess what? Niggas start looking up like, hey man, these people not playing. They send niggas down. Like, you know what kind of money Gunner and Thug done miss right now? They whole crew. And we talking about these boys the cream of the crop right now. You know what I'm saying? They getting top dollar, top billing for whatever they do. That's a lot of money they, gonna, they don't have to give back. That's a lot of money they ain't gonna make. I mean, of course, they're going to get their stream, their royalties. They'll be straight for life. But don't nobody who really want to see them go to jail. You know what I'm saying? But then when you t you have people on the other side, and when I say the other side, when you have the families of victims who feel like these alleged artists are gang members and did cause these traumas in their life, they don't give a damn about no music no more. They don't give a damn if you the king in the streets, you know what I'm saying? They want justice for their loved ones who they believe may no, no longer be here because of y'all. So it's one of them things where I think cats need to really watch what they're doing and what they're saying because it's a sweep. It's a roundup right now. I'm telling you, it's real. They snatching up whole crews. They snatching up the cousin who just drive the car now, you know what I mean? So I, I, I think it's... um. It's unfortunate, but it's definitely going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to raise a lot of eyebrows because you're going to look up and there's going to be more people and more people with indictments because people are going to start telling. And before you know it, before you know it, the prosecutors of the city going to feel like their job has been done. The community, when they start feeling like, wow, they ain't playing, they ain't scared. They really lock these, they locking these people up for doing what they, they these people gonna start feeling like there's a change, they're gonna start feeling like they winning, cause they take a lot of that money out the streets. You know, these cats, they feed a lot of people. And that's why they putting the whole gang shit with it. I mean, we know how it go out here in the streets. Like, like if you my squad, if we YSL, and you grew up with me, and you my boy, and you get money, you move with me. We may not necessarily be a gang, but we move. We move together. They automatically say that you go to some cities, man. You can't even walk. Black people can't even walk in the mall in groups. I done been. In, I done been there. You can't wear hoodies in some cities in the mall. You can't wear. Y'all can't all have the same colors on in some malls. You can't come in there with flags in some malls in some cities because they are so fearful of gangs and shit.
Now, I completely understand everything that you're saying, and it makes total sense. Um, but let's switch topics for a second. Let's do Go it. to something a little more lighthearted. Elon Musk, uh, founder of Tesla. Right. This guy just had twins. Yeah. This is his 10th, like 10 kids. You're no stranger to having a big family. What do you got? Something like six kids yourself? No. No? Okay, you have a big family. How about that? I got more. Yeah. I got more than six. You got you got more than six kids? Yeah. Oh, damn. I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, Nick Cannon, mm -hmm. he got something like eight kids, one on the way, mm -hmm. pushing nine. Mm -hmm. What's, what is your thoughts? Do you think white men get viewed differently than black men who have these large families? Well, it's just, it's not, <laughs> for one thing, it's, it's, not, it's not out there on the forefront. They're not, they're not talking about it. You don't see that's the difference. They don't, you don't, you know, white people tell, they tell themselves down like within their own court in the confines of their whole society. You know, it's us. We, we, we got to put it out there. We make a song about it. That's just my baby daddy type shit. And I think somewhere in the, a lot of times when cats have a lot of kids, they don't have enough time to devote to these kids. They don't have enough money to properly ration out to these kids to their responsibilities so they get a bad rap. But if you don't hear about it much with white men, and let's not lie, it exists. There's some, there's some, some white men out here who ain't shit and don't take care of their goddamn kids. You just, they may not televise it as much. They ain't gonna talk about it as much. They ain't gonna put that negative ass they ain't gonna put that. That's 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 a that's a stigma. They're not gonna put that negative stigma into the world to tear down their 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 code, their race. You know what I'm saying? We do though. But I mean, we get a bad rap because a lot of times you hurt a lot of women in the process of making all those kids. Because apparently you couldn't stay in one relationship unless it's one woman with 10 kids. And even if you don't be with her, if y'all break up, she could have been the most toxic person in your life. But if you leave, you're a deadbeat. You're a bad guy for leaving this, turning this into a single, a single parent home. You get what I'm trying to say? So I think what mm -hmm. happens in our world, black women are so vocal. And I'm not saying black men don't do bullshit. What I'm saying is black women are vocal, but they're gonna talk about it. And they're not gonna, they don't wanna stand for it at all. And I'm not mad at them for feeling how they feel, you know, but I think it happens more and it's, it's, it's seen more. I'm going to just, I'm going to leave it at that. I just think, you know, you got a lot of kids, you need to be able to take care of their period. Speaking of black women being vocal, there's a video that recently went viral. I'm sure you've seen it just like the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, woman, has four kids. She had one kid with her most recent baby daddy, and he came to the house with McDonald's, but for only his child. But she and knows, she exposed him. But 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 she really did them. They I really don't know how real that was because she also dropped another video stating that it was a skit, and she only has one child. She said, "Look at her her IG." She kind of denounced that as just being a skit. And she like, hold on, y'all, I'm getting the wrong look. I need to be getting a look as a as a creator, as a content creator. Like, now we get me fucked up as a dumbass baby mama because she's like, I only got one kid. There are no four kids. This was just a skit. And I think it just hit so hard as like, damn, because it became a topic of conversation. Exactly. Um, but but because you do have a lot of immature people, a lot of hurt people who have hurt people. You have a lot of people who are spiteful. You have a lot of people who just don't understand or who haven't been raised and taught properly how to be an adult in a situation like that. To it was so believable that people went with the narrative. And there you go again with the stigma of a black man in our in our community, in our society, either because she said she was going to expose him. What were you exposing? Was he wrong? Um, Honestly, if that's his child, that's his responsibility. No, he's he wasn't wrong. If this was real, no, he wasn't wrong. But the tact that should have been used, the level of discretion and the level of maturity and the level of consideration 
and accountability that should have been used would have been, look, if I come here and I give my child this one meal, I know his mama going to be mad and it ain't just going to be his mama mad. His brothers or his brothers and sisters, whoever they is, they going to be mad at him. It's going to cause a problem. Ain't no sense in me creating that divide. So instead of doing that, let me just buy a pizza or something or let me just take instead of spending five dollars on this goddamn happy meal. Let me just go spend three dollars on a pack of ground beef and a dollar and fifty dollar ninety nine cent on a loaf of bread. He'll make them all some goddamn hamburgers. Or go get him some hamburger helper. The, 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 you know, morally and ethically, it may have been may have been better for him to kind of do that if that was a real thing. But again, she said it was just a skit. So, got you. I didn't realize she came out with a follow up video. Yeah, because nobody wanted to believe that shit. They're like, nah, nah. But she did. Yeah, she definitely um, raised the conversation within the community. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, sticking in this lane. Um, about kids. He recently, um, Roe vs. Wade, monumental court case overturned after 50 years. Uh, so at this point, is is abortion illegal in, in Georgia right now? Do you know? Abortion is illegal unless the governor says otherwise of that. But then President Biden just overturned the whole decision with a whole other thing he just signed. So I'm not I'm not all the way in the know on from from point A to B to C to D to Biden sign or what he done sign now. I don't know what they're really saying to the point where I'm going to have to ask someone myself so I can make a fair assessment my own on my own as my own man, because I, I'm not sure what it is. But if the governor says that they're not going to ban it in that state. And it doesn't have to happen. It's just like when Governor Kemp, the federal government said we're going to shut down and Governor Kemp said, I'm going to keep Georgia open through the pandemic, through Corona. That's what the fuck happened. Atlanta was open. Georgia was popping. You know what I'm saying? So some of these places, they're going to get an influx of women, women traveling there because they're going to have the green light for it. You know what I'm saying? Which is going to open up so much, so much more. For these people in these areas, because a lot of these women might not be able to travel long distances after they have an abortion. So they may have to have an immediate care facility right after that to give them a day to get themselves together before they could travel again. So I don't really know to the full extent of what the fuck is going on with that right now. But I'm waiting because somebody somewhere is going to say something and we're going to be talking about it again within the next couple of days. Trust me, mark my words. OK, so let me ask you this. Um, do you think this reversal is going to have a positive or negative effect on society? And you're no stranger to having kids, but I don't know if in your travels you actually I'm a, had. I keep, it, I keep it a buck with you. Because I know where you're going. Mm -hmm. You know what? Somewhere in there, it's got to make people be a little more responsible. You know, because just like mm. right now, we got to. <laughs> a morning after pill. Yep. Which allows a guy to, you can quote unquote say be irresponsible because they get to, ah, 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 you know, you can let, let go in there. Can I say it like that? Can I say shoot up the club? You know, you do that, <laughs> right? But because it's a morning after pill, guess what? You know, $50 take that morning after pill, we good. Dump all these hormones in your body to keep you from getting them pregnant, to keep you, us from conceiving a child and we good, right? Now, some women ain't finna do all that. They ain't, they think we good. You ain't do nothing, did you? No, nah, I don't think I did. Then you look up. By the time she look up, she pregnant. Now, when you coming down to this right now, and a woman sitting back saying, hey, it's one thing to take a morning after pill, but an abortion is a whole nother situation. And now that I can't just freely go and get one, the women are going to make the men be more responsible in the sense of wearing protection, using protection, or she making sure she's on the proper birth control or making sure that he has a vasectomy. Because even the dudes, I got some homies right now like, shit, boy, I'm strapping up. I'm like, you need to strap up anyway. <laughs> shit out here, my boy. But they're like, boy, I'm strapping up, boy, because if she can't get no abortion, boy, she might try to keep it. I'm like, well, well, don't just let go in the thing, my mans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I think it will be. Some people will be more responsible. 
And there are some people that just don't believe fat meat greasy and they're going to do it anyway, thinking they'll figure it out. And it's going to cause some issues. It's going to cause some tensions. It's going to cause some breakups. Some homes going to be divided. Some women going to end up trying to do some things themselves. It's going to be people with the black market shit doing it. You think it ain't going to be somebody you think you think it ain't going to be somebody somewhere who will perform an abortion for you because they once had a clinic. And it's just destroy how they make their money and they living. You think it ain't gonna be a black market for that? That's where the problem Absolutely. gonna come in at. That's where the problem gonna Absolutely. come in at. Yeah. Cause even right now, even if they if, if you go for a doctor's appointment and they see that you've you've had an abortion, oh, they questioning that. And if and if they find you guilty, that's a federal charge. So some mm. somewhere down the line, I think it may. It's gonna it's gonna turn into something else to be honest. I think it's gonna turn to something else. Like they're gonna have to give you a certain time, and after that time, because I don't know if the the six weeks is enough time. Because like you know, most women that's about when they find out. It's like, girl, I don't know. Did I miss my did I miss my cycle? Mm, let me check. And they don't know when they when it was. You know what I'm saying? They could keep up their yep. period, but they're not necessarily keeping. I'm sorry. Women could keep up with their cycle, but they may not necessarily be keeping up with. That they gonna know who they did it with. That's how they can go back and be like, oh, okay, okay, this happened on June the third. <laughs> but when it come down to finding out how long they've been pregnant, that's where the problem gonna come in at. Because if you pass six weeks, then you out of luck. You asked out. Switching topics, Southside. He said that he's the BBL founder, funder rather, um, Brazilian <laughs> butt lift funder. <laughs> <laughs> He said he done paid for over 10 surgeries. He also, you know, in addition to paying for these Brazilian butt lifts, you know, he got a couple of breast implants for women. Mm -hmm. Has Young Jock joined that club? Are you part of the BBL funder club? Are you cool with men paying for Brazilian butt lifts if it ain't their wife? Yeah, I'm cool with it. They don't got shit to do with me. If you want to pay for Brazilian butt lifts, do your thing, my boy. Cause I understand <laughs> what you get out of it. You know, that that you know, he might love the woman and be like, yeah, you bad now. But if but she wanna be better, you know what I'm saying? He wanna sport like, arm candy, he knows shit. I'm gonna do this in the six weeks. You bad now. If I could just <laughs> that out your stomach and <laughs> fatten that ass up a little bit and stand them titties up, oh you're gonna be hard. Do your teeth. <laughs> You fire. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. get them eyebrow done. <laughs> yeah. Got you up through that now. <laughs> now you're looking like something that could be on my arm. That's why they're doing it. I mean, and it's women who like, look, I know I'm going to be bad. I look good. Now, if I just do this, my confidence is going to be up. I'm going to be pulling. I'm going to be making money. I'm going to be, you know, there's so many things that they see come from it. So, yeah, if they want to do that shit, south side. Keep doing your thing, my boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Speaking of surgeries, Bam Man Kevo, Kevo, he got lipo. Okay. So once upon a time, you know, it was women who was getting the cosmetic surgeries. Now right. men done jumped in the pool. Right. What you think about men getting lipo and would you ever get lipo? No, nah, I wouldn't get lipo. I wouldn't. I mean, I just feel like I could, I can, I just don't want the complications. I never had a surgery in my life. So I'm not just walking in and saying, hey, I'd like to have surgery today so I can look better. Fuck that. I get in the gym. Matter of fact, I missed my, my gym appointment, my first day back in the gym. Today, that's why I'm wearing this jogging suit. I was supposed to go, but I said, you know what? I'm going to have to reschedule to tomorrow. I kind of, I, I just took precedence for the moment. But tomorrow, I'm back in there. I'm not getting cut. Yeah, society, our society looks at it. I, you know, black men, we like, bro, that shit, that kind of soft. You got down getting got down and sucked out you. That shit seems so feminine. But I mean, hey, man, shit, niggas is doing other shit. Y'all niggas is putting drugs in your body every goddamn day. I, I mean, that shit might just be just as stupid as that shit, you know. Niggas is overdosing on dumb ass shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, that's what he want to do, though, you know. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to judge him for it. I might be like, damn, bro, you really got them. How they did it, bro? They got them. <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask some questions, but I don't knock them. I mean, you know, we're going to look at it like it's not as gangster. But hell, the gangster, gangster. They taking their gold teeth out and getting veneers. 
you going to get your teeth mm-hmm. out. But see, that's, you know, that's my teeth. It's, it, it, you know, you got to be a G to let them drill them thing, file them thing down. And, ah, 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 that kind of hard. But when you sit there and somebody's sucking it, <laughs> sucking the fat out, it just, it just comes <laughs> off so feminine. It comes off so closer to the BBL. Like women do that. But guess what? A lot of the celebrities that you know do it too. They do the non-invasive ones. They go in, boop, 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 one day and they be out of there. You don't know. You trying to figure out, man, how you look so lean, dog? Well, hey, I got a roll coming up. I had to go on and get these little five pounds of fat off me. I ain't had time to get in the gym and burn it out. I want to suck it out so I can get my abs sculpted. I mean, Cash is doing all kind of shit. But, you know, Bam Man Kevo, what I will say is I salute you for your honesty. Because I don't think mm-hmm. no man, and I mean this shit, I don't think no man should do anything without being confident enough, confident enough to be honest about what he's done. I think that's lame because it's all kind of niggas that do shit and don't want nobody to know. Like the same niggas who talk shit about Kevo is them type of niggas sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying all of them, but it be like that. So I salute a nigga. Now, it might seem like TMI in a sense, but I'm going to salute you because you confident enough with your well with all and who the fuck you are, you felt like that was the right thing for you. Who the fuck am I to judge you for doing that? So I salute you for your honesty and your your level of transparency, sir. Real talk. Um, it's a lot of dudes out here now. I'm not sure if you heard of it, but they got a surgery where they can add about six inches to your height. Yeah, you know, the, the knee. Dudes are literally getting taller. To the legs, yeah. Yeah, Correct. so basically they break your legs. And then they, they separate the bone where they break it and breaks it. And so that shit grow back together. So within that, you gain you, you gain inches in bone. Matter, I think I'm saying it right. I, that's what I read. That's crazy. They're doing all kind of shit. They got the goddamn penis extendo now. But I say he want to put a switch on the goddamn on the nine. <laughs> that, thing, <laughs> that thing got down and get you three more inches. You know? I know it be like that. These cats doing a lot. They ain't gonna tell you that though. You gonna be like, "Boy, I got a, I got that that peen extendo." They ain't gonna tell you they did that. They might tell you, <laughs> "Bam man, Kevo might say, you know, I got my little stomach done, my sit pat." Somebody might say they got their teeth done, but ain't now a nigga finna come out and be like, "Bro, I had, I had to." You feel me, twin? I had to. That thing went from there to that. Like, ain't nobody gonna tell you that. So it is what it is. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine having to tell somebody about the surgery? Like, man, oh shit, man, I'm gonna be down for three weeks, man. Why? Goddamn, I goddamn went and got an extension on that thing. That's not a conversation you can have. <laughs> who do you tell that to? Who, who you tell that to? Well, you, you just said you shouldn't do nothing. You ain't confident enough to tell people. I, believe, about. I don't but, think it's too many dudes out there who gonna be but telling that's that. That's what I'm saying. Unless it's something like that, then it's like, shh. But you know, hey. I said what I said. It's I'm what it is. To it. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Snoop Dogg, his his daughter recently came out and she was slamming all of these trolls because basically they was like, "Yo, her boyfriend is only with her because of her famous father." Um, how do you feel being famous actually affects your kids' relationships? I mean, the dude cuz you know, some relationships that's that's around them probably shouldn't even be around them. Those relationships are may strictly be because of who their parents are, who they're connected to, especially if somebody famous. Um, and sometimes kids could really genuinely be your friend, but certain things happen through the course of time with them knowing you if your parent is a celebrity, and it can make them envious because they lack that type of um, system. They don't have that system in place with a parent who can dish out funds so they can get you know, thousand dollar sneakers and two thousand dollar Louis book bags to go to school and shit. You know what I'm saying? Some of these kids, it, it, you know, as grown ups, uh, shit. You can take a grown, you can take a grown woman and another grown woman who friends, and she get a dude balling, got that bag, or famous somewhere. Now she got to be like, damn. She probably had a conversation sometime behind the back, like, you know he was looking at me first, bit. You know he he was looking at me first, but I went, <laughs> you know, I went with all that kind of shit go on. So if grown-ups do it, you know kids do it. You know what I'm saying? Kids might not have a, the, the full mm-hmm. understanding of the spectrum in that instance, but shit, it happens. My question is, why, my only question is, why do people got to yeah. come out? 
That's on. I'll be, I'll be like, damn, you felt the day was the day you want to come out. Why you had to come out? Because for me, for me, you know, I get a lot of, mm -hmm. I get a lot of uh, tension when I had this conversation with people. And I always ask, like, what's your sexuality got to do with what the fuck we got going on? Hey, guy, you want to you want to suck some penis? Do that. That's your fucking business to a woman. You like the same thing. You like to munch on the same thing that between your legs. Do that. That's your business. Why does everybody have to come out and be like, hey. I'm gay. Like, OK, what the fuck? OK. Motherfucker, I like smoked crab legs. I'm not out here. Hey, coming out today. I, I just, <laughs> I love smoked crab legs. Like that's your business. And I think, I think that it's a, it's a form of liberation because maybe because they don't have to hide anymore. Maybe they've had to hide behind their truth, you know. And, I, and I, so I'm not bashing. I don't want anybody to say I'm bashing. It's not a phobia. But I just never understood why people have to announce. Why does it have to be announced? You know what I'm saying? You know, you have a baby. Hey, we're having a boy. Pfft, blue. Mm -hmm. We're having a girl. Pfft, pink. Okay, great. That's an announcement. That's we're having a baby. And this is the type of baby we're having. But I guess maybe they feel reborn when they come out. Like instead of having a pink or blue, it's a multicolored rainbow. And hey, it's a goddamn reveal. <sighs> Sorry for saying goddamn in front of it, because I'm just talking. That's how we talk. Gotcha. Somebody say, you called it a it was damned by God, the reveal of being a I don't fuck all that. Look, man, if you gay, you goddamn gay. That's your business. Why people got to come out and tell everybody, hey. I'm getting fucked, bro. That's your business, nigga. Get that along. <laughs> okay, speaking about your business and, and telling everybody, everybody was hitting me the last time we sat down together. Like, why did you not ask this man about him getting his hair permed? Why did you not ask this man about him wearing a dress? Right, right. Please come out and tell everybody what was that all about? Okay, well, very simple. I always been a guy. I'm I'm different. When I say I'm different, I could take on pressure, different uh, social pressure, better than the average person around me. You understand what I'm saying? I was that tough mm -hmm. cookie always. So I don't care what you say about me. When I press my hair, here's what it was. I'm going on Ice Cube's new show, Hip Hop Squares. Mona calls me like, yo, I want you to put, put your best foot forward, man. Put on your crown, King. I was like, yeah. I was like, damn, I should put on a crown. I'm like, nah, T.I., I think T.I. hosting. He could probably get on have a crown. But I'm like, who all on here with me? They're like, man, it's all big names, big stars. I'm like, really? So I'm like, I'm going to do something that stand out different. I said, I'll wear something on my T-shirt. I was like, nah, because if they shut that down, that shit ain't going to even, you know. I do something with my hair. I'm just wearing a little, I'm just wearing a little temp fade. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do something <laughs> with my goddamn hair. What I'm going to do with it? Shit, I don't know. I say, you know what? I'm going to press that shit out like Miguel. I'm going to press that shit out like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the white boy swoofé. And that's what the fuck it was. When I did that shit, man, listen, when I looked in that mirror press, when that woman pressed my goddamn hair out of my mirror, I said, oh, oh, shit, you got what you asking for, my boy, because they finna be on your ass. And I want y'all to know to anybody who, 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 who's ever wondered, I see the same shit you see. Yeah, now, when I mean, I you had to see all them Auntie Jock oh, yeah, um, all that. memes that was out there. All that, all that came with it. All that came with it. But guess what it did? That shit opened so many more doors for me. Because people were like, hey, man, I like this man attitude. He don't give a, he don't care. He don't care what you say. He ain't caught up in the same matrix half of y'all caught up in. He going to do him. And he going to justify doing him because you're not going to see him arguing in blogs about what y'all got to say. He's not fighting back. He did what he did and that's it. 
it's just my hair is pressed. Soon as water hit that shit, that shit turned right back to what it was. <laughs> Nappy. You feel what I'm saying? No perm, no nothing. I ain't had to go through no, no process and nothing to do it. It's what it was. And I garnered so much attention. I was like, well, I'm going to ride this shit out. I wrote it out for a year. That's what I did. When you got McDonald's, okay. when, when you when you were, when you got McDonald's calling you, when you, you know, I remember that year I did. I did the Magic City Classic with Luda. When I'm, I'm sitting on this float with Luda, Mr. Fast and Furious, movie just dropped, extra big. You know how you, you be big, but then when you drop something big, you be a little bit bigger and bigger and you just keep getting bigger. I'm sitting like, nigga, this is my boy Luda. Yeah, I'm on the float with him. They called him on the book me because of my hair. Yeah, I made the same amount of money he did. He had to do less, but I made the same amount of money he did to perform with McDonald's. Cause McDonald's paid me, right? Ford paid me, and Miller Coors paid me. I did three events, all three of them. Even though I had to do all three events to make the same check Luda made, I made the same check Luda made. So my niggas was laughing at me. I was tickled by suckers. I was like, damn, I look crazy. I do, I know the shit look crazy. I see what you see, but I'm getting paid off of it. That's what it was. Now the dress shit, I was pissed about the dress shit. I made a bet with Stevie J. I made a bet. We both lost. And nigga got down, put the dress on. I like, yeah, nigga, yeah. I'm like, I ain't finna do you got to wear that motherfucker too. We lost. Man, mono and mono real nigga shit. Alright, you lost? I lost. Put that motherfucker on. They tell me to put these heels on. I like, man, get out of my face, y'all. Don't watch out now. The goddamn dress I go for. So all you gotta do is walk from <laughs> one end of this street to the next, and we done. I'm like, nigga, I could do that. Come on. Let go. I lost a bit. I say people don't talk shit about me. Fuck it. I'm a man. I'm a man of my word. I know a lot of niggas be like, yeah, bro, but some shit I just can't do. You right. It was one of them things that it was a little easier for me only because I said, you know what? I lost a bit. Ain't that's what happened? White boys lose bets, have to do the dumbest shit. College fraternity kids do the dumb, dumb bets and have to do dumb shit. Okay, here it go. It's just some threads at the end of the day. I'm still a man, still a knock your ass out, straight up. So get what? When I jumped out the truck, I like, ah. I'm looking at the camera like, man, you got them cameras out my face. I see Stevie <laughs> J. I'm like, yeah, come on. I'm like, come on. Let me show all this. I'm like, come on, get your ass out that truck. When he jumped out the truck with, with, in regular flow, I was like, God. Nigga just played me. But I had to own it at that point. I, I'm like, damn. What, I going to be standing out there in my, in, in, in my boxers and, and sneakers? I'm like, my nigga, you out with that fuck shit. Nigga, 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 nigga what's up? I'm going to fight about it. Nigga, I lost the bet, nigga. If you and, and 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 if you was that, you know, down enough to stand on your square and, and keep your word as a man and put the dress on, nigga, that fall on you. So it fell on me. And I took it. Now one of these niggas still ain't put their hands on me though. About it. About none of that shit. So I don't even care. It don't matter. It's like, I'm not inviting none of that. I'm just saying, look, man, that's what happened. I get over it. Yeah, that's that it. was one of the moments. Um, and I'm glad I finally got that question out. And if I wasn't everybody... married, I still take that bitch. Mm. With the hell order dress. Yeah, man. I know that shit sound like. I, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Somebody saying, oh, this nigga tripping, tripping. But don't let that shit fool you. Your woman wish you could be honest with who you are. It's a lot of cats, and I can say this to y'all face. It's a lot of y'all wish. Your woman wish you could be as open, full of life, honest with yourself and people. Y'all can't, and it's okay. I don't fault you for that. I'm just thankful to God that I'm able to be who the fuck I am at all times, and that's just it. You mentioned you mentioned another guy from Atlanta who's been putting on for Atlanta for many years, Ludacris. Mm -hmm. um, but behind Ludacris is a frat brother of mine is one of the nicest individuals uh, that you would ever meet. Is his long-term manager, Shaka Zulu. Right. 
you know, Shaka Zulu has been repping for ATL for so long. Yeah, man. Um, doing great business. Good brother. And he was recently shot. Yep, recently shot. Good brother. Um, what is going on in Atlanta? Because once upon a time, Buckhead was considered like that's the part of town don't nothing go down in. Do you, and every time the news comes out, it seems like the crime in Atlanta is getting worse and worse, and it has moved into the Buckhead area. In your opinion, do you think that it's just hitting the popular media, or and the crime has always been there, or is it getting worse and it's going to continue to get worse in the state of Atlanta? So, or the state of Georgia, excuse me. Well. With everything I said, man, when it came to the whole concept of um, the pandemic, that like left the floodgates open, you know. And I and I, I ain't taking no shots at New Orleans, right, or nothing like that. But it's kind of like when Katrina hit New Orleans, <laughs> and them gangsters left New Orleans and ended up in different places. Houston, in Houston, Houston. <laughs> man, in I, Dallas. Hey, I remember being in Houston. And as some bunch of cats from New Orleans walked up on, on me with the cats I was with, and they shirt said Houston, Houston Anna or some the Louis. It was basically said the New Louisiana. We took Houston, and I, when I was reading the shirts, I was like. Damn, like, what do you say? I'm here with all these Houston cats. And they walked up, and it wasn't no confrontation, but it was a mob, and it, and the crime rate kind of went up some when that happened. And that ain't nothing against Louisiana, but this is kind of how it's happened. It's like the floodgates open, and a lot of people migrated here through those years while these cities were closed. Now, while these cities were closed, a lot of things were not available for people to make money, to, to continue how they hustle, to live how they live. And you got people out here don't know what to do. The hell, the government don't know what to do on half of this shit. So the average citizen looking around, especially cats who ain't got nothing to lose, young cats out in these streets, these niggas in the streets trying to figure it out. I think they came here, and you know when you come in, you really could see like, but niggas out here, eat. Oh shit, like, wait a minute. I'm in Buckhead, what is going? I'm not going to a regular mall breaking into a little challenger or a charge or somebody Maxima or a nigga Cadillac. Me like, boy, Rolls Royce and Ferrari, Lamborghinis. Boy, that shit up here. Hey, yo, come on down. And I just think people came here and it's just like it's a free fall. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas out here been living like, I ain't going to say carefree. But when people come to my city, they be like, bro, y'all live so carefree out here, bro. We got to watch for the laws. We got to watch for the bangles, the rob. The, 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 and we be like, yeah, it exists, but we out here getting money, man. We working together. Like, niggas ain't, this is trying to get away from the bullshit. We trying to get money. Um, I just think that the crime wave has definitely been up. Um, we on that list. 10 most dangerous cities to live in. I'm glad we're not at the top of the list. You know what I'm saying? Because we could be way worse. So if we didn't have, I feel like if we didn't have all as much opportunity here, I think it would be even worse because people would be mm -hmm. worse off as far as families having income and shit like that. But it's definitely different, bro. And I and I hate that happening to Shaka, you know, because, you know, it's something some interesting. A lot of times I get on, on YouTube or I, IG and I watch murders and stuff like that and shootings, you know, that's captured. Not because I'm intrigued by it, but I be looking like, damn, how, how did not, what, what, what didn't he see coming? What change in behavior was taking place and he didn't pick up on it? You know what I'm saying? Because we all done been somewhere just cooling and something happened. And you like, God, damn, you don't know what's going on. You just hit shooting. I, I look for shit like that. Not look for it. Let me take that back to the universe. Let me knock on some wood. I don't look for it. I be trying to make sure I am aware of my surroundings at all times, man. And sometimes you, you know, it don't always happen like people think. People think it got to be an argument and an argument turn into a shootout. Sometimes you got somebody already on, sitting on you and they just dare to do just that. Sometimes you got people who looking for whoever and with whatever. So if you match my energy, this is going to be the outcome. You know, you got some people, it's just a, a volatile situation. 
turns deadly. So I just I just try to keep my head on the swivel and, and just I stay in the house a lot more now. I ain't even trying yeah. to be out here in these streets like that. Our pr our prayers they continue to go up for Shaka, and we really do wish no him doubt. a speedy no recovery doubt. because real, Shaka is one of the most nicest and beautiful human beings um, on this planet. So our prayers go up. For Agreed. Him. Speaking of crime in in Atlanta, Atlanta rapper Trouble DTE shot dead, thirty five years old. <laughs> what like what is going on down there, brother? Like, did you know him? Of course. Of course. Of course. You know, you 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 want to know how me and Trouble got cool? Hmm. Real interesting story, man. Shouts out to Jody Breeze. Shouts out to Freeway. Shouts out to Fat Cats and my boy Tom Cat. Let me tell you what happened. Jody Breeze shooting a video on Edgewood. I never forget it. Song him and Freeway got jamming record. They in the middle of the street doing their thing. I'm over on the side with the directors. So I step off to the side to holler at Tom Cat. After I finished hollering at Randy and Fat Cats, and I, I go to holler at Tom Cat and these little cats standing in the breeway like, hey, yeah, we just gonna let out about 20 of them things. So I'm like, I'm like, what the hell did the boy just say? So I'm trying to like on him, they're like, Jock, what's happening? I'm like, what's up, my boy, y'all good? Hell no, nah, we ain't good, bruh. I like, what's up? They like, man, how the fuck these niggas gonna come in our neighborhood and shoot a goddamn video and tell her we can't be in our trap? I said, oh, this y'all shit. They like, nigga, this our shit, nigga. Nigga got them yapper right now. We finna shut this bitch down. I like, oh, wait, 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 wait. But they spend a lot of money. We don't get no fuck. They ain't check in with it. I like, well, shit, y'all wanna be in the video? Them niggas were like, hell yeah, tell them nigga put us in that video. We ain't gonna shut this bitch down. So I was like, Okay, hold on. I went to goddamn. I went to I went to the direct. I like look. See these little young niggas in the cut over here. I said, do not get these niggas locked up. Just hit me. Hit me out. I said, boy, they finna shut the video shoot down. Did they block? Did they hood? Put them in y'all video. I mean, it's gonna be authentic because this where they from. They were like, who? When they looked over there in that corner and saw <laughs> fifteen little niggas standing over there with them shirts out, they were like, oh shit, that shit looked like it's finna happen. I said, it is. So he's like, hold on. So I walked in the middle of Jody and Freeway filming and shit. So I was like, hey, 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 I know, I know you probably gonna get pissed because I'm walking in your shot. Listen. Bro, these little cats over here trying to shut your shit down. Jody was like, who? I like, you know that they hood. And see, Jody, Jody's so hood and, and he from a, you know, a smaller area. So he understood. He was like, hell yeah. So Jody was cool about it. And they went over there, got in the video, everything played out. And I guess word got back to trouble. So when trouble came home, he was saluting me. I mean, he even did a diss record where he was dissing a lot of the cats in Atlanta and shouted me out in the record. And me and Trouble just got cool. It was just cool because I looked out for some of his homies in that moment. And it was just one of them like, you know, you could call it a G move or you could just call it being aware of what the fuck going on in the hood, man. So that's how me and Trouble got, um, got really cool, man. And over the years, you know, I wanted to see him win. And, um, and he was winning. I just hate he went out the way he did, man. And I, it's just one of them things, man. You know, that's kind of, it's not like he got in a shootout over some bullshit outside or, you know, you know, he, he, you know, allegedly from what I hear, you know, he was in the house with his woman. You know what I'm saying? And her and old boy recently broke up. So she had three old boy that she got a warrant on him because apparently they got into it, blah, blah, blah. He put them hands on That's allegedly. Because I, I don't know him like that, you know what I'm saying, to be saying what he did or didn't do. But allegedly, and so in her mind, maybe, he not coming back here because he's scared he going to go to jail because I told him I took a warrant out for him beat me up. But the man's name is on the lease. Allegedly, that's what I that's what I've heard. That's what's you know out there. So for you know a guy to come in and see that he don't really know what's going on. All he know is somebody in the bed with his with his whatever she is to him. You don't know if he gonna shoot you or you gonna have to shoot him first. It happened, and 
it's a very unfortunate situation, man, because even if Homie beat the charges the way the streets were, he still might not be able to just move freely. Not not here in the streets. Not you know what I'm saying? Even if he beat the charges. And if he don't beat the charges, now that is that again, as I said earlier, that's two lives gone over a simple misunderstanding. And I really, me personally, you know, I don't really know how people gonna take it, but I think the police should be asking her some more goddamn questions. Because somewhere in there, that's negligence. You know what I'm saying? If I do something and it's and I'm negligent, I could be sued. If I do something and I'm negligent, guess what? I can be locked up. You know, right now, if I fire my weapon, even in self-defense, if I got a high-powered gun and I hit you, pow, bullet go through you, pow, hit an innocent person, kill them. Even though it's in self-defense, I don't get off. I don't get off on hitting that innocent person. My negligence will get me locked up. So in a situation where she know that this man got a key to this house, his name on this uh deed, I mean on, on this lease, allegedly, that's negligence on her. And I hate that. I don't want to create no issues with nobody, but I'm going to speak my fucking mind. That's negligence. Some charges need to be filed. Because, shit, man, if she wouldn't have had a man in her home, knowing she got a man who name on the deed, that would have never took place. You kind of get what I'm saying? I, and, I, and I again, I don't want nobody to say, oh, you trying to get charged to put on no girl. But I'm saying for real shit, it's negligent. It's negligent. Because if it went the other way around, and they said, well, did you, well, did you know that did, did you, did you, she had a key and she lived here? And it's just been a week. And you brought somebody in the house because he could have been in that house under false pretenses. Trouble, that is. He could have came to the home like, I don't live here. Don't nobody live here. Baby, you good. Don't nobody live here. You sure ain't got no nigga shout. Yeah, it's good, baby. I ain't, I'm single. <laughs> Ready to mingle. Ain't you here? Okay, then bet. Now, you done lied to me. I'm just saying, if that's how it went. But would, would you have gone? Would he have gone in that house knowing the nigga ain't been there in a week? Put his name on it and he got a key. I don't, I don't, I'm going to say with my hand to the world, I don't believe Trouble would have been in a position like that. Put himself in a position like that, knowing a nigga got a key and his name on the, on the lease and this is where he live at. No, so mm -hmm. in some way, ain't, ain't nobody said no. I just be sitting back listening to some shit sometimes like, well, damn. If it would have been another way around, Trouble would have probably got charged for having that girl in his house because his girl got the key. And he bring her in the house. So somewhere in the people, I think, need to be looking into that. Let me not say they need to be looking into that. I just think that my man's lost his life. You know, he a, he a, he a legend for our city. You know what I'm saying? As far as just doing what he's been consistent with, with who he's been, you know. And I just hate to see another one go like that. Yeah, I really do. Um... Okay. That shit heavy. Go you to had something. to come out of that yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, it really is. You was yeah. in the house just then one. He's like, that shit heavy, man. That shit make you think like, damn. Like, damn. Because right now, that's that like, that like, you set me up. Even though it ain't saying, yeah, I'm finna, I'm, your intention is not to kill me or have me killed. But you do know the possibilities of me being in here because if it would have went the other way and trouble would have had to bust him. Trouble would go into jail. She would have got off free still. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I nigga came through and I had the bust. Bow. Well, you know, you a felon, you a boy have a gun, but I had to protect myself. But you don't boy have a gun, now you're going to jail. Bitch, if you want to got down, why are we here? So it kind of is, mm -hmm. it could be, you could, I'm out for it. Cause it could be negligent on so many parts, man. At the end of the day, you know, we gotta make better decisions as adults, as people, man. You know what I'm saying? No matter what position you stand in this, whether you the girlfriend, whether you was the trouble, or whether you was the shooter, the, the boyfriend who lived in that situation, we we gotta be more responsible and and and, and, and anything we do outside, cause niggas don't care today. They don't. Speaking of making decisions, loving hip hop Atlanta is back. Oh shit. Cast members like Erica Minna, Carly Red, Kurt Frost, um, Kendra, Mama D, just to name a few, mm -hmm. all back. Mm -hmm. 
What made you decide to come back to the show? Why would I walk away from a chick and something that's working for me? Mm. I mean, what, what, why did I decide to continue to be who I, who I want to be when, I, when the camera's rolling? I mean, hell, I, you, 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 gonna, you gonna pay me to follow what's going on? All right, we've been doing this shit for a minute now. You got to think it's, it's it's been a it's been a good run for me. If it was over with today, I'd be good just off the fact that the world, that network, the show gave me the opportunity to show the world another side of me and to further my career as an entertainer. So why why wouldn't I? You know what I'm saying? Unless. It was stunting me to the point, I, uh, to a point where I couldn't get no other kind of work. Stunned me to the point I'm not really making no money from that shit. Stunned me to the point where it's causing me to go to jail from fighting or get shot at or some shit. Okay, now, at the end of the day, shit, they seeing what's going on. Y'all paying me for it. Hey, let's keep it, keep the camera rolling. Got you. Um, you know, on this show, I've interviewed Benzino. Um, you know, I don't know, four, five times at least. Why why don't you think he was asked to come back to Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Cause it seemed like they asked everybody back. You know what, man? Let me tell you something. Sometimes, you know, in certain equations, certain variables they're not gonna last long there. They're not gonna fit long. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I just feel like, you know, after Carly Red, it was Benzino and Stevie. And I don't think, I mean, I think Benzino is in, entertaining in a sense, you know what I'm saying? But maybe the world didn't feel like they cared to watch him on the show no more. Maybe he had some discrepancies with, 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 with Mona. I remember some shit took place and some shit was said. And I think that was one of the things that happened where you know, some, some took place. I remember a while ago. And that created a, a rift for him and the network. And again, this should be a platform for everyone who's on it to, you know, use it to move into whatever else that they're looking to do. And hopefully it served Benzino and Althea well. He was on there for several seasons and did extremely well. And I'd like to think that he benefited from that and can now take that experience and that fan base and, you know, prosper. That's all I wish. So it just happens like that. You know, you got to choose your battles wisely and you have to know how to properly nurture your relationships. That's the most important thing. You know what I'm saying? When I come on set, anything I do, nigga, I'm telling the gaffer, nigga. I'm telling the lighting guy. I'm telling the nigga holding the, the boom mic. What's up? How you doing? I hope you're having a good day. I ain't treating nobody like they beneath me. And I'm not saying Benzino did any of that. Benzino is really a, a nice guy. I'm just saying me, when it comes to me, I'm acknowledging people. Hey, man, I'm appreciative of this moment because it might not last forever. It ain't going to last forever. It could be over with today. Life happens. This could be the last time I see y'all. This could be the last time y'all see me. So, hey, man, salute y'all. Let's have a good day at work. And, and, and my, that type of energy makes it easy for me to work with people. So people that I mean, I'm, all, I, I could, I'm not going to let me, I don't want to sound like I'm, um, I'm not boasting or bragging. I'm just saying I become a people favorite. I don't want to use the word fan. I become a people favorite because I'm easy to deal with. I'm easy to work with. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, I'm not going to say easy to learn me because I'm a lot more complex than people know. It's certain things I choose to show and let people into, but it's it's pretty easy get to get along with me, and I and I make that one of my um, attributes when it comes to doing business. People are like, hey man, he a good guy. He gonna get the job done. We ask him to do something, he gonna do it. He ain't lazy. He, he gonna get it done. That's just what it is. You know, sticking in the world of celebrity and. Um you know, just really getting things done. It looked like your man Lamar Odom had been getting things done in that ring with celebrity boxing. Mm -hmm. It was just announced that he's about to box fake Drake. Would you ever join the cast or, or not even the cast, but would you ever do celebrity boxing? Why well, knock a nigga And ass if out. you did, if you did, before, who would you want to box? Who would you want to box? I don't know, because I, I don't have like, it ain't nobody that's like, I want to knock his ass out. Like, you know, there may be people that 
don't like me, but it's not like it's a lot of people that I don't like. So it ain't like, ooh, I want to just goddamn uh, uh, gut punch and hit you in the chin, come across a bing, knock your ass out. I ain't even on that. But I definitely would. I definitely would. Really? Yeah, yeah, I would. So you would step right in check. that ring. Uh, but, For the but right here's check. The deal, like, you know, like I know, in, in boxing, all it takes is one punch. Like, yeah. you will put yourself out there to where, yo, you might be nice with your hands, but somebody might have that lucky punch and make you a meme. I'm going to get paid. You would do it. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to get paid. I wasn't mm. scared. At least you will say, that nigga wasn't scared, though. He didn't hold them hands up good, but he wasn't scared, though. <laughs> I, I, I say, God, <laughs> referee, <laughs> time, <laughs> nigga on my ass, ref, time, <laughs> I'm going to get that check for what you're talking about. Who? I box a nigga ass today. Man, listen, because half, half the people, I'm going to box smoke too much weed and do too much drugs anyway. Come on with the come on. I don't do none of that shit. I don't do that <laughs> shit. Come on, I'll knock a nigga ass out and be got them try be I be got them money Mayweather trotting around that bitch. I let you get tired. You gonna hit me? You gonna hit me? Bite the shit out. Well, Lamar Odom, Lamar Odom for I mean, we we all know he's had his problems with with, with drugs and alcohol, but he seemed to be doing his thing in the ring. So, um, shout out to him in in you know, fake Drake got his hand. He 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 got his hands full with that one. I think I don't think so. I think Lamar got to be careful in that situation. With fake Drake? Goddamn right. He's a lot younger. He's not no little guy. He I don't he don't look like he do a lot. If he do do drugs, you can, he don't look like he do. Lamar going to have to put the liquor down, put the weed down, put the whatever down. And got down. And he older. He gonna, he might get winded faster than this young boy. He don't see. He could look into Lamar Odom's eyes and see his past. He can see anything he thinks he knows of Lamar Odom. Lamar Odom's is a, he's a name. He's recognizable. Shouty no wheel. Lamar going to look at him and just be like, well, I don't know who this dude is. I don't know what he's capable of, where he come from. I don't even know who he connected to. You, you, you fighting a goddamn, a ghost, really? That man might got them have them hand. That man might hit Lamar <laughs> and be out of there. Like you talking about that one lucky punt. That man might got no, especially he got that little heart. He cut that little heart another that Drake guy. Because <laughs> you know he be wearing that shit, but he get that heart freshly cut enough. He going to punch, he going to punch Lamar right in the chair. Poof, hit him in the heart. I'm telling you. Thank God, remember I told you this shit. Remember I told you this shit. Yeah. Who you got your money on? I'm going to go with I'm gonna go with Lamar and I'm going to tell you why. Oh, because he got a reach. Because Lamar, he got the reach. Like he, the, All he got to do is just keep jabbing. That's it. Just keep him away. Lamar owed him something like 6'10", 6'11". Bro, I feel like I seen Lamar boxing on something, and he was looking weak as hell on something. I, I feel like maybe it wasn't Lamar. Nah, he did celebrity boxing a couple of times, and he looked pretty good. Lamar looked good in the ring. Real talk. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, fake Drake, okay, you look. better got down be on your regiment, boy. Don't go in there playing. <laughs> look how I switch it up. Don't go in there playing, fake Drake. I'm with Lamar. Nah, I'm just talking shit. I still think Lamar had better be careful. He way older. He way older, bro. All right, put put we we don't gave fake Drake enough in the, in this interview. Let's go to to real Drake for a second. Real Drake dropped a new album. Yeah, um, a lot of people had mixed reviews on it because you know they saying yo this is a dance it's a it's a dance album it's a house uh, music type album but yeah. it became Apple Music's biggest dance album of all time. What's your thought? Is it just that music is changing? No. Is Drake so no. ahead of the curve? No. At this point, the man's so rich. What else you want him to do? What the fuck? If, if he sits here and says, listen, when it comes to these, these platforms and all this music, DSPs and all this shit, it's 60,000 goddamn uploads a week. New music coming from everywhere to be a rapper, to do hip hop, to, to be in that space. The man stepped back and said, well, how many motherfuckers is putting out dance songs, dance music? Because that's still a space that is viable around the world, globally. 
Now I can try to get over here in this old goddamn crowded ass room. Or I can go over here in VIP for a minute. Go fuck it up, make a bag. He just got four hundred million dollar deal, didn't he? Didn't he do some shit like that earlier this year. Yeah, yeah, four hundred yeah, million. Yeah. So th- th- with that kind of money behind you, it's like, look, go get the money back the best way. They ain't just fucking with Drake because he know how to make music. He's an excellent and a phenomenal businessman. He has sound judgment when it comes to his fucking professional career. Who gives a fuck if he made how much? How much more music you want Drake to make for y'all niggas? Like, man, let this man go make some fo- some music for these folks and got them in that land, in Spain. Let him do it. Guess what he doing? Guess what he doing? He ain't got to be around none of you negative motherfuckers. He can go right over there and niggas could dance all night to his little dance songs. And he, gonna st- he still going to make it bad. It was, it was the what, what it was, the number one what? The number one what? Number one dance album. Number one dance album. Pull up on me. On, um, that what Drake said. Apple Music. Pull up on me. <laughs> all the other <laughs> shit y'all niggas talking about. Ooh. What you want? Who, who, who? What, y- what y'all think? He done gave you so much. See, that's how people do you. They, they use you until they use you up. Hey, man, this one for you. This for them. S- f- sit back. Y'all niggas acting like dogs. You know how you go to the fence, hey, now. And y'all done ate all the dog food. Let me get him some. Now they trying to fight him and you mad at me because I'm feeding him. S- fall the fuck back and let me feed these people some. And that's it. Little flip. Mm-hmm. Flip basically said hip hop, um, Houston hip hop. It kind of lost its spot because if you remember back in like 05, early early two thousands, mm-hmm. Houston was putting out a lot they of was on dope fire. artists. Fire on fire on fire, and he was like, "Yo," he felt like you know it lost its spotlight because of the lack of hustle. Um, a lot of the promoters was paying these out of town artists to come in. Instead of paying them Houston locals to do their thing. But you from the A. And I, I just want to say, man, because when Atlanta took this thing, Atlanta never gave it back. Atlanta ain't fell off yet. Y'all been on something like a 20-year run straight. Why do you think Atlanta has not fallen off yet? I tell this story all the time. You want to know why? Yeah. Atlanta has one of the most busiest airports, Atlanta Hartsfield. The hub is Delta. Any and everybody can get to this motherfucker at any given time, any given day, any spot they want, they can get here. Okay. We have the biggest HBCU conglomerate. That's the Atlanta uh, AUC. Okay. You got all these schools. You got, what's that? Clark. You got Spelman. You got Morris Brown. You even got more houses getting their accreditation back. Okay. You got those schools, right? You got Clark Atlanta. Then you got your Georgia Techs. You got your Georgia States, you know, then, then, wait, wait, wait. Then you got your Atlanta Area Tech, Atlanta Metro. You got all these colleges, right? So what happens? You have the world and the United States, when it comes to us, the ethnicity, this melanated skin, these people can come here because we got this airport and they, and it's, they come in droves. Now, if I take a room full of people from just Atlanta, right? And I take a room full of people that's all from all over the world and all over the United States. When I play certain music in this room of just Atlanta, niggas ain't gonna go for certain shit, right? Because their mm-hmm. ears tuned for a certain thing. But when I play the music in a room full of people that's from everywhere, when I get that room, that room to say, ah, that's it, it goes back out to everybody because it's been agreed, agreed upon by the, the masses in this sense. So when they come to Atlanta, if it work here, it can work all over the United States because people are from everywhere. They went, they ain't been here long all the time. You got people who just got here, who freshly got here every year. It's a fresh new ear coming from where they from. Houston, let me tell you what happened with Texas. Let me tell you what happened with Texas. Texas, yeah. was, so, Texas was so big that they could get rich inside of Texas. That's why if you ever just really look back at them Texas rappers, that's why they was popping so hard. You was looking, all these niggas had all the jewelry. They had the jewelry jewelry. They had the Johnny, the Johnny Dang. They got the jewelry jewelry. These boys were iced up. Look at how they were living. They made themselves rich. It's just like California. Like they didn't have to travel outside of the state of Texas. Now that may be one of the reasons why 
they may have gotten a little comfortable because they was red. These niggas was, if you know anybody from, look at Slim Thug. Yep. That boy still bossed up, man. I just seen Flip not that long ago. Slip, Flip came to a whole festival I was in. <laughs> I stopped in the Rolls Royce. I was like, okay, my boy. You feel what I'm trying to say? So I just think Atlanta, we 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 got we we have a, we we have the it's like the special conference. It's like a conference every day in the club. Cause people come in when the music play. If don't nobody in that room move in Atlanta, that shit ain't gonna work nowhere else. Cause it's influenced by everybody. Right now they're gonna go on the break. They don't gotta go on the break no more. You, you, we can see it. The world can see what's happening. They're watching what's happening in Atlanta. It's just one of those things. You got a lot of people who come here dedicated to get education, dedicated to excel, dedicated to make music, dedicated to be a part of the entertainment business some way, somehow. And that's why we ain't never gave that shit up. Now, yeah, you got you got your rappers who beef here and there in Atlanta. OK, but we could talk about those. You could count how many beefs that we the world know of on one hand. You go to these other cities. The whole side of town beefing with the whole side of town. Niggas can't come together because they beefing with these cats because they do this dance this way and they do that dance that way. We kept a lot of our beef suppressed. That's why even me, there's a certain guideline that we follow. That's why even me coming on Vlad the last time with me sharing all this stuff. Y'all say it's exposing. No, I'm just enlightening you to some of the things that I've suppressed and I dealt with. Could I have been beefing with niggas? Yeah. From the stories I told, don't it sound like I could have been beefing with niggas? Yeah. But I chose not to. And I said, I ain't going to fuck it up because this bag is way more important than this beef. And that's what I did. Other places can't get to the bag because they make the beef more important than the bag. That's the problem. So that's my breakdown on why you have a spot like Atlanta that has popped for so long. We had major, we had major production companies. You had goddamn Dallas Austin. You had uh, Dallas Austin Rowdy. You had Organized Noise. You had So So Deaf. You got down got La Face. I can keep going on and on. And these powerhouses was producing top tier artists these artists got diamond records and shit like that and that influence is real and that's why Atlanta ain't never let that shit go we like the hill watch out wait, watch out. can't get it move uh a <laughs> little bit <Pull> up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's just it that's what i think now if anybody care to challenge that feel free to feel freely to do that in the comments i comment back Yes, I have an active YouTube account, so I could come in back on your ass. Challenge me on that. You can't. You can't challenge it. Nobody even never told it. Nobody even never told it like that. And I've been saying that for years because I've always been the one to ask questions. I don't interview you. I interview myself and what's going on around me. I'm saying, well, why is Atlanta so popping? Oh, this is why. Okay, so let me challenge you on this because it don't seem like it is much of a challenge what I'm about to say. Your beloved Atlanta Hawks, they ain't won a title since 1958. I ain't saying and shit about then, how, how well we ball and play football and basketball. Yeah, you talking all that talk all that shit about talking. balling. You talking all that talk about not giving it back and your phenomenal breakdown. Yeah. How about you break this down? <laughs> Come on, your with it, man. beloved Hawks. Oh, shit, they ain't won a title since 1958, and back then they was the St. Louis Hawks. Dang. Now, going off of what you just said, Atlanta is a desirable place to live. It's easy to get to. Mm -hmm. It ain't like people don't want to be there. So what the heck is the problem with your Hawks? You know what the problem these niggas be partying too much, man. This niggas be too fun at the house, man. Magic City? <laughs> they be in there. Listen. Listen, man. Listen, man. Be in there, man. I'm with, I, I, was gonna, I ain't gonna tell the story. They, they, boys be outside, man. Cats be outside. But then I'm, I gotta say this, too. Perhaps our culture has inspired and influenced so many things that we've touched. Now, we may play that sport, right? But it's a possibility that there's not enough of us in the lead positions with these teams. Because 
when you hear brothers get to arguing about a player and who we should have drafted and who we should have got, it always sounds like it makes sense. Well, if, if we can seem to make sense of it, why can't these these owners and these coaches come together and say, hey, they got this. They got the secret. We haven't we don't have enough dominance in that space to make the decisions for what we see work for us. They see for what work for 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 them, these owners and shit. They see what work for them. But we see what work for us. So just like I named them those 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 labels, the La Faces, the Rowdies, the Organized Noise, the So So Devs. You know what I'm saying? As I'm naming those, those were like the managers. Those were like the coaches. You know what I'm saying? And then whatever label they uh, they they furnish their artists to, that's like the team owner. You get what I'm saying? But see how we had the influence in that to say, no, Monica, she's a star. No, Outkast, they're a star. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Hey, uh, 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 T.I. is a star. Like we could pick it out. You, you, could, you could see it and feel it. They, maybe we haven't been positioned properly when it comes to our teams and sports with the right people that understand how we really work together. They ain't did that. That's the, I'm going to leave that shit at that because that was going on. I'm uh, telling you. Or maybe. I'm or telling maybe, you. Maybe. Or maybe <laughs> Atlanta also be in the strip club capital of the world. They need to put in them boys contract. Y'all need to stay out them clubs. Period. You're blowing your salary in them clubs and y'all can't do nothing on the court. But I'll leave it there, Jock. You play hard. You, you, all right, you got me. But I said that, though. I said it. I did say it. Yo, it's been be my in, pleasure. It, it, man, you can't be in the club all day long now. You know, we got after hours and all that. Them boys get out of the jet, being up. Well, I'm in here. I got a little bad to blow. Brought some little freaks with me. God damn, why don't you got a game in the morning? Shit. We ain't going to win again. How about no this? Way. Them boys be in there after <laughs> practice, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But that's a whole different story. You smoke too much of that gas. Yo, <laughs> Jock, it's Yo. been my pleasure. Um, you know, I love the conversation, love the energy. For well, sure. And, and we got to do this again, my brother. I, I agree, man. I, and I definitely appreciate y'all lending me the platform, you know, to share how I see life through these lenses you did, man. Young JLC, look here, man. New season of Love and Hip Hop, 8 8 at 8. Be looking for the new single. What that thing called, Chino? I ain't said look for my new single in a long time. Who is that? Well, we got three. I got Ross on one. I got, I got, I ain't telling y'all. I'm just letting it. And I ain't using this to do that. I just ain't dropped music in a long time. And I felt like doing some new music. I'm like, you know what? Why not? I got me a song too, shit. Hey. <laughs> Drake, holla at your boy. Yonsei. Give me a little 12 on one. I saw you know what I'm saying?